Good afternoon, everybody. Merry belated Christmas, and welcome to another episode here on the SITREP podcast. I'm your host, Riskiny Jim, and here we go for an actual miniatures table. I know, right? Shock horror. Uh, as often as uh, we run other kinds of games, video games, hex encounter games, strategy games, tabletop games, we do try to do miniature games, like legit miniature games, every so often, but it's actually kind of hard to do those things live. But we're definitely doing it today, because this is a special, uh, a special occasion. The battle that we're doing today is the Battle of Trenton. So, the Battle of Trenton, as we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, uh, took place on today, 245 years ago today. Uh, we're officially about six hours late. It really should have been about eight o'clock in the morning. But it's uh, the Battle of Trenton, 26 December, 1776. And what we're talking about here is Washington, you know, famously crossing the Delaware and attacking a fortified Hessian outpost that um, didn't win the war, didn't even turn the tide. But after the six months of absolute unmitigated disaster that Washington had just kind of been through, this was sort of his army's last throw of the dice. Um, he needed a win. He needed it now for a whole bunch of reasons. Militarily, he needed it. He needed it politically. He needed it for morale. And he needed it for administrative purposes. Half of his army was about to leave December 31st, like in five days. Uh, their enlistments expire. And uh, he can't ask them to re-enlist until he shows them some kind of win, some kind of victory. Uh, so he needs to get, and he's also like, completely out of supplies. And this Hessian outpost has all kinds of supplies that he desperately needs. So logistically, militarily, tactically, operationally, as down to the paperwork of the enlistments, literally a whole portfolio of reasons. He has to do this absolute bonkers attack. Uh, it's amazing it worked uh, when you actually read about it. Um, they call it the miracle of Christmas for a reason. I mean, seriously. And uh, yeah, if this, if this hadn't gone right, that would have been the end of the Continental Army would have probably been the end of the American Revolution, and that's the end of the idea of a United States until at least the late 1800s. Okay, so here's a quick map of the general layout of the American Revolution at this part of the war. The general campaign starts off here at Long Island. The Americans lose at least two or three battles there, one really big one and two smaller ones. Um, they escape up here to Frog's Neck, they escape across the water, they lose at Kipps Bay, they lose at uh, Harlem Heights. Some people say Harlem Heights is a draw, it, it's not, it's, it's, a, it's another defeat. By Plains, another defeat. Uh, Washington crosses up here, meanwhile we lost Fort Washington, we lost Fort Lee, it's just defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat. Washington's army is 20,000 people, he's up against 25,000 uh, troops under Sir William Howe and 15,000 uh, Marines and sailors under his older brother, Admiral Richard Howe. 40,000 troops, so he's outnumbered two to one. He has no Navy, and he's being asked to defend New York City, which as you can see here, is basically a series of islands against the most powerful Navy on the planet. Shocker, it doesn't go well. On top of all that, Washington's army, air quotes, is 90% uh, militia. And the second these guys hear like their first musket shot, they literally throw their weapons down and they just run away. Washington gets chased all the way across New York. He winds up in, uh, in Pennsylvania. It's now December of uh, 1776. So we declared our independence in July of 76. The British reinvade New York in August of 76, and it's an unmitigated train wreck uh, from there. It's now December of that same year, and uh, Washington's army is down to 2,000 out of an original 22 to 25,000. He's got up less than 10% left. And uh, what he has left is got jaundice, dysentery, frostbite. Uh, they're demoralized. They have no supplies. They have no shoes, no blankets, no nothing. Uh, it's literally falling apart. And like I said before, in about five more days, the majority of what's left can now legally leave because the papers that they did sign expire on December 31st. So he needs to do something and uh, needs to do it now. So what he does is he's hanging out down here in, in um, Eastern Pennsylvania, and he decides, um, you know what? It's time for me to, to pull something out of my ass, so to speak. And he hatches a plan that on Christmas day, 
He's going to march 10 miles up the uh, Delaware River. That's the river between New Jersey and Pennsylvania there. He's going to march north um, about 10 miles up the river. He's going to cross the river at night. Delaware River is a rocky river. It's now half choked with ice. And uh, he's going to do this in the pitch black of night on Christmas Day with an army that's already marched 10 miles. And they started off exhausted and sick. Um, the crossing takes way too long. Now he's going to march 10 miles back down the river, and he's going to attack an outpost at Trenton. So the British are so confident that Washington's basically beaten, they're just waiting for spring or whatever, um, that the British commander, Sir William Howe, doesn't even send his whole army south uh, to finish off Washington. He sends down some of these hired regiments out of what is today Germany. Again, we call them Hessians. They weren't all really Hessians, but... They're, they're crown Germans. Uh, we'll call them Hessians for this stream, but it's, it's fine. Um, that was the, the general term of the day. And then he's got like five or 7,000 more troops under Cornwallis here at Princeton. And that's about it. Howe himself does not come down from New York City because he's got a banging new girlfriend. Uh, her name was Elizabeth Loring. She was rumored to be, uh, to this day, one of the most smoking hot women on the continent. The, she was the wife of one of his generals. And uh, by all accounts, this girl was, uh, was you know, serious. Uh, <laughs> it was some serious talent. And um, I only mention that because it's literally credited with half the reason the American army still exists. Um, if Hal was not very, very comfortable, warm in bed by the fire, snuggled up next to one of the most attractive women on this side of the planet, it is highly unlikely um, that he wouldn't have marched down here with 20,000 men, marched across the ice as soon as the Delaware River freezes, and present terms of surrender. So right now he's only got about 1,200 troops at, he at the uh, 1,200 Hessians at Trenton, and that what Washington is going to attack. Uh, to win a victory, to score some points, to put at least one W on the board, so to speak, and to get some desperately needed supplies. So um, last year we ran this game in our Battlefield Revolution system, um, or our Battlefield Rebellion system. This is the entire area of the Battle of Trenton in 100 meter hexes. So clearly we're not going to do all of that today. Um, this yellow rectangle here describes the 8x4 um, table we have set up in 20 millimeter that we're actually going to play today uh, with live matchers. So I just put this board on here so we can kind of tell where we are and what's going on. Uh, and then here's also the same basic map uh, as you know, pulled out of an Osprey book on the subject. So we've done all of our research. We know where all the brigades were. We know where all the regiments are, all the divisions, the artillery, and so on, and, uh, and so forth. So, okay, we've got uh, Tuffy here says, A Little War did a Christmas special of, um, from the battlefield in Trenton. Um, that's cool. I'm not terribly sure how much of the battlefield of Trenton is still there, so I'm not sure where they shot that from. Um, Trenton was all of about probably 80 buildings at the time. Um, and of course, it's a much bigger city there. I used, I used to, I actually was born and grew up in New Jersey, so I've been to Trenton a couple times. Uh, it's a relatively like mid-sized city now, um, so I'm sure that most of the battlefield of Trenton is under a fair amount of asphalt and concrete. Uh, unless they preserve certain parts of it, but um, yeah, I'm sure it's um, I'm sure some landmarks have been preserved, so that would be pretty cool. Uh, the Trenton Barracks. Okay, cool. We have the Trenton Barracks on our table. Uh, tough years. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, let me just check our three channels here, see what's going on. Cool. Um, all right, so here we go with. Let me switch over to my camera here, and I'll show you what we actually got going on. Come on, camera, wake up. All right, so here's the battlefield as we see it at the moment. So I'm going to swing the camera around a little bit. It's a full 8x4 table um, in 20 millimeter uh, with patchy little bits of snow on the ground. So the weather was a deciding factor or a, a, an important factor uh, on the actual day. It had rained like pissy, cold, really nasty winter rain, um, probably... 30 degree water. It was raining the day before. It snowed overnight. And then in the morning, that snow kind of turned into a nasty little sleet. 
So it's a lot of slush um, on the table. And uh, that's why the snow is not like a pretty, you know, winter wonderland kind of a board. It's much more, uh, you know, it's, it's much more patchy. Um, so this is the north end of the table. We are looking from the east toward the west. So over there past the edge of the table, that's Pennsylvania probably. And then of course down here is the southern edge of the table. And that's the northern edge of Trenton. So again, referring back to that previous map and that, uh, that yellow rectangle that shows the table that we're looking at here. Okay. Um, the beginning of the Battle of Trenton is kind of dull. So we've played through the first two and a half, almost three turns uh, already, just to kind of make sure that this game doesn't turn into a, like a seven hour stream uh, with the first two hours being like super boring. So this was the, this was the original setup or the, the initial setup. Um, the Hessians were not on the table because they were all asleep in their barracks at the time. So I just put their unit markers, their regiment markers, and you know, certain attached companies like the Jaegers down here. I put their markers by the buildings where they were asleep. Um, then on turn one, uh, Washington comes in from two different roads. So Washington himself and uh, part of Nathaniel Green's division comes in on what they call the Pennington Road. You can see that coming down here. And then over here, we have uh, Sullivan's division coming in on what they call the River Road. Hopefully you can see those guys back there. Uh, we'll take a closer look at those guys in just a second. Okay, so again, here we have uh, the lead elements of Green's division. There's Green himself, uh, his lead brigade, that's Fernoy's brigade, and uh, some other units. And then some units weren't even on the table yet at the end of turn one. Uh, meanwhile, on the other wing, this is Sullivan's division. Uh, Glover's brigade crosses here jumps over that fence, that hedge in mine formation. They set up by that stone barracks. That's that barracks you were mentioning a second ago, Tough Years. That's it right there. And then here uh, we have um, uh, St. Clair's um, uh, Brigade and Sergeant's Brigade. Uh, pretty much the rest of Sullivan's division crossing that, uh, that wooden bridge. My dad built me that bridge the other day, by the way. Thanks very much for that, Dad. And um, they're pretty much going to try and set up on that barracks before the Hessians even wake up. But we'll see what the dice do for and of course uh, here we have um, right by where Green's Green is pretty much the lead guy in the army at this point the Hessians wake up on a 1 on turn 1 they wake up on a 1 or a 2 on turn 2 they wake up on a 1, 2 or a 3 on turn 3 you guys know how this kind of thing works it's a standard activation role you see in a lot of Battlefront Claims of War bolt action kind of games uh, we're doing the same basic kind of thing here so uh, on turn 1 you see there the Hessians roll a 3 they're all still a snooze in their bed, which is a really good thing because the Americans are not even close to set up on turn one. They, I have at least two whole brigades that aren't even on the table yet. So we kick off turn two. Um, here again, we see Fermoy's brigade. This is the lead brigade of the Thiel Green's division. They're now further down the Pennington Road. They're actually off the Pennington Road now. They're now on the Prince Road. Their idea is to cross this creek. Um, that's Petty's Run. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and get set up on the Hessian right wing. Um, again, as you can see here, they're not in for, they're not in position yet. There's a little bit of risk involved because the Americans get double movement as long as they're in column on a road. The problem is when you're in column formation, you cannot fire and you definitely cannot melee. You're pretty much really, really vulnerable. Your flanks are also wide open, as you can tell clearly, just because the, the way the column formation is set up. So it's a bit of risk reward. How close do you want to get to the enemy? How fast do you want to move before you trade that movement for a combat formation in line? Um, so far, the Americans have been pushing their luck, and so far they've been getting away with it. Um, on turn two, Washington himself comes on the table. There he is. He's, uh, his little command group includes Colonel Fitzgerald and also Alexander Hamilton. If you don't know who he is, uh, pick up a $10 bill. He's right there pretty much inventor of the American economy in later years. Uh, here at Trenton, he's an 18-year-old captain, so he's just a wee pup at the moment. Nevertheless, while Alexander Hamilton was in charge of clearing the Hessian guardhouses, so he led a four-man bayonet team and like literally stabbed these people to death in their beds. Um, that's how the American army was able to draw up so close uh, to the Hessians uh, on the actual day. Um, also on turn two, we have Henry Knox and his artillery. He had three uh, six-pounders, to my knowledge. 
So we're trying to get them to their historical positions. They're pretty slow, though. Uh, and even when they get to where they're going, they still have to unload. Meanwhile, uh, Green's division is getting in formation. Here we have Green himself with his little command group, while Mercer's brigade, that's General Hugh Mercer, who was actually a doctor, not really a general, but he was filling in as a general here. Um, pretty much the closest thing Washington ever came to a personal friend, uh, at least during the Revolution. Um, so he's leading that lead brigade across that central bridge over around Petty's, Petty's Run, that little creek that kind of bisects the board. So. Yeah, he's, again, still in column formation. So moving at double speed, but he's got to stick to the road, and he's murderously vulnerable. It's okay for now, because the Hessians are still asleep. It all depends on when the Hessians wake up. Uh, even more scary is the extreme American right wing, where uh, St. Clair, Clair's Brigade and Glover's Brigade, those are the Massachusetts Marbleheaders, are now, like, right up against that barracks. How the Hessians aren't awake yet is kind of, uh, kind of a mystery. We'll get to that in just a second. And then we have the tail end of Sullivan's division still in column formation. At least St. Clair is online, and at least uh, Glover is online. So if the Hessians do wake up on turn two, we'll be able to present some kind of a fire against it. The good news is it's now turn two. So the Hessians are going to activate on a two or less. I'm going to give them a plus one. That's that red one you see there, because the Americans are so close. We do get lucky. The Hessians roll a six. So luckily, they're still asleep when we begin turn three. Turn three, the Americans are really beginning to envelop the Hessian position. Um, here we see that central part. We're now shooting from, the camera is now shooting from the, uh, the Hessian side of the river, or creek, I should say. Mercer is now across the bridge and online. Green's right there. General Washington's crossing the bridge. He's leading uh, Sterling's brigade across the bridge. Sterling's still in column. But we do have at least one brigade, about 300 guys. Again, each figure is about 20 men. Uh, we're looking at about 300 men on the uh, enemy side of the creek, and they are online and ready to fire. So we're starting to get finally in some kind of good position. Um, meanwhile, Knox has finally got his artillery in position. Um, that red dice, however, shows that they are still limbered at the moment. Another historian wargamer has joined us. Hello, Dylan. Bunch of American in boats going to kill Germans? I don't know if I feel like saving Private Ryan ripoff. No, nah, man. Luckily, these Germans didn't have MG-42s waiting for us on the other side of the river. I'm particularly glad Dylan showed up because Dylan is the guy who um, showed up uh, last year. Dylan, you played this game as the Hessians last year on this board. I actually have part of your board still here. Give me a second here. There's part of your table. You probably remember that table. Guys, all honesty, no false modesty here. Uh, Dylan kicked the hell out of me. Um, I was playing the Americans, and the Hessians just woke up way too early. I came across that creek, and he had Grenadier Regiment Raw already set up and online, and that was not a pleasant welcome. Not at all. That wasn't very nice. Um, hopefully today goes a little bit different for the Americans. Damon, hello. Uh, ben, hello again. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming out. George Washington himself is now on the bridge, and again, he's leading Sterling's Brigade across the bridge. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll see what happens in the next couple of turns here. Now here is the Hessian activation rule. It's now turn three, so they activate on the three down, and again they get that plus one because they are um, because Americans are literally knocking on the door. They're about to charge bayonets through the door. By the way, that happened historically. Um, they, they assaulted the building and killed half of um, Grenadier Regiment Wall while they were still in the barracks. So there was actually some people were commenting. Just for fun, on turn three, I decided to break up the Hessian activation rolls by regiment. So there's three basic regiments in the Hessian force. I'll go into that in just a second. But long story short, the Hessians failed on the first one. So Lossburg Regiment is still asleep. However, that two is Grenadier Regiment Wall, and three, that's the uh, Night House and Two Sleepers. So the Hessians needed a four or less. Again, that's the black three and the uh, red one. Add them together, you get four. That was the target. They failed one, and they made two. So some Hessians are finally awake. And that's where uh, these regiments start bailing out of their barracks, straight into American musket fire. 
and I stopped the pregame here because here is where we're going to go live and we're actually going to start, um, you know, throwing dice and, and tr taking my first swing at a legit live miniature. So guys, be gentle, be patient. This is uh, not something that's easy to do. Um, if you ever run a miniature game at a convention, now try running one on a live stream with cameras and shit. It's, it's not easy. Um, but we're going to try our best here, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's it for the little spreadsheet there. Go ahead and save that. Hopefully. Hurry up and save. All right, now we're back to a camera. This is an actual live camera. It's live feed right now. So let me unplug this laptop so I can roll around this cart. So my um, my webcam is actually um, on a rolling cart at the moment. So I can actually maneuver us around. Okay, so again, this is north. That is south. West, obviously. East, obviously, okay? So the Americans came down this road, that's the uh, Pennington Road, and then once they reach here, it now becomes the Princeton Road. Some guys continued down the Princeton Road. They're now as far down as here. They're trying to get around the Hessian right wing. We've got Hessians in this building that have not yet acted. We've got Washington Center formed around Green, uh, Major General Green, Brigadier General Mercer. Of course, then there's General Washington himself. He's going to try and form up the center. That's the Potts House. That is uh, Rawls headquarters. St. Michael's Episcopalian. I'm sorry, uh, St. Michael's Evangelical Church. Here we have Trenton, Pres uh, Trenton Presbyterian Church, complete with a graveyard. That cemetery, by the way, is where Colonel Rawl is, is buried. You can see his gravestone to this day. It's actually still there. Um, then we have the stone barracks that Tuffy Ears was mentioning back there. The Abraham Hunt House. And I think that's it for the historical buildings. Everything else is just pretty much a building. Okay, we do have the three bridges that are important. The River Road Bridge. Hopefully that's on camera. Yes, the River Road Bridge. And then the two bridges over King Street. This is King Street right here. And this is Queen Street. These are the two main north-south avenues that go through central Trenton in those days. Okay, so those are the major landmarks. We have American artillery on the high ground. That's right where it was historically. It's going to fire. It has got a range, a maximum range of 45 inches. It can hit some of the buildings in uh, northern Trenton there. That's when Mossberg finally decides to get out of bed. And if Nipausen, Fusiliers, gets activated. They are activated, but they have to get formed up. They have to head down these little side streets and present some kind of formation across this meadow here. This meadow, is, this central meadow here, is where most of the actual fighting took place along with an apple orchard that we can't quite fit on this table, but don't worry about it. Um, all right, so again, give me a second to maneuver this god-awful Trent, this uh, cart that only has front wheels that can actually turn. No worries. So I'll get back to where we were, where there's actually going to be some shooting here. And all right, here we go. We'll go ahead and get the. We'll go ahead and kick this off. All right, once I check the comments. Another historian wargaming says that game was a lot of fun. Definitely recommended. Uh, people try out Jim's Hex Encounter AWI game, American War of Independence. Thanks very much. Oh man, sorry for the, how badly that uh, ca that camera shakes the. Uh, that cart shakes the camera. Sorry about that. Tough ears is seasick already. Okay, no worries. Uh, sorry about that, tough ears. Um, I promise there won't be that much. Uh, the table looks great. I mean, convention ready. Thanks very much, uh, because science teacher. All right, we'll go ahead and get this uh, get this game actually started here. So let me get some dice. We are gonna need some dice. Actually, I need a lot of dice. All right. Cool. All right, guys, let's go ahead and kick this off. So what we've done here is completed already, obviously, the American movement phase. That was the easy part. Uh, we've got Glover's Brigade here. 
Um, the, the tail end of Sullivan's division here, there's the divisional commander, that's General Sullivan himself. We've got St. Clair's a brigade here, and we've got the riflemen that are attached to Sullivan's division here. Notice the riflemen are in skirmisher formation. They're not in base-to-base -base contact. Okay, so they were set up here, like I showed in my previous photographs. And then this regiment, Rawls Grenadiers, this is German heavy infantry. These guys are pretty badass. These guys activated. They woke up and they bailed out of their, their, their bunker, or they, not their bunker, uh, they bailed out of their barracks, okay, in order to try and take formation. Historically, half these guys were still in their long johns. They were still in their long underwear. Their weapons weren't loaded. They didn't know where their officers were. They didn't know where their NCOs were. This is thunderclap surprise. Literally roused out of your bed by the first musket ball coming through the window. So the Americans are going to get what they call pass-through fire in this system. Uh, we're using Battle System TSR 2nd Edition, copyright 1989, by the way. Uh, the Americans are going to get passed through fire during the German movement phase. So pretty much as the Germans come out of the barracks, the Americans are going to open fire. Now this game, everybody, spoiler alert, is going to seem ridiculously unfair. Uh, Dylan can back me up on this, I'm another historian wargamer. Um, this game is, gonna, is like the mother of all ambushes. It's going to seem ridiculously unfair. The enemy is literally asleep as you walk up and club him to death while he's lying in bed. That's how it went down. Conversely, in order to make the game fair, the victory conditions are ridiculously lopsided the other way. The Hessians have to get tabled. Every single unit destroyed or simultaneously en route. Once that happens, the game's over. The Americans win. In so doing, the Americans are only allowed to lose a single figure. So again, a figure here is about 20 guys. A figure here is about 20 guys. The most pessimistic estimate of American losses at Trenton put it at four killed and eight wounded. That's about 12 figures or 12 people. So that's kind of a figure. Again, a figure is 20 men. We're talking about 12 casualties. That's going to be a certain amount killed, a certain amount wounded, a certain amount lightly wounded, a certain amount scared, run off, out of ammunition. That's pretty much one figure rendered combat ineffective. So if the Americans lose one figure, a single figure, there's about 100 American figures on the table right now. If the Americans lose a single figure and table the Hessians completely, there's 84 Hessian figures on the table. They table the Hessians completely while losing only one figure, they win. If they lose two figures, they have to roll. Um, they have to roll a three up on a d6 to win. If they lose three figures, they have to roll a five up at the end of the game. And then if they lose four figures, they automatically lose. Meanwhile, they have to either destroy or rout 84 Hessian figures. So yeah, the, the the asymmetrical victory conditions are lopsided against the Americans. This is just classic, you know asymmetrical war game design where the battle is ridiculously unfair for purposes of historical accuracy and the um, the victory conditions are ridiculously unfair the other way to compensate okay so these americans are going to open fire these guys here aren't really in arc maybe some of them are most of them aren't i'm going to get one two three four the arc is 45 degrees so these guys have some kind of arc on these guys as they bail out of the building all this fire is going to count as flanking fire because the Hessians are not in formation yet. So it's going to be negative two on the uh, on the Hessian saves. So we are talking about. Let me get my dice tray ready here. We're talking about four figures. That's going to be four d4s, and we're going to see if we score any hits. There we go. We're live. We're now shooting dice. That's going to be two hits on the Hessians. Okay, the Hessians get saves. Um, let me go f look up what the Hessian save is. I forgot what I wrote down. Sorry, guys. Um, for Grenadiers, the uh, for tough troops, the save is normally a six on a D10. Here it's an eight because again, uh, it's all considered flanking fire. Flanking fire gives you a negative two uh, penalty. Uh, nine and a three, so that's one save and one not. One Hessian figure is already removed. One down, 83 to go. All right. 
Um, first figure down, use a morale save. These are pretty solid guys. They are um, 13 morale, so that's going to be 2d6. That's a 5, a 2, and a 3 on 2d10. Uh, so they totally made that first morale save. Okay? So that's this unit has already taken its uh, opportunity to fire. Now, this unit fires its full blast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 d4s. Holy crap. Do I even have 10 d4s? Uh, Jen, just let us know if we get any more comments, please. Jen, can you hear me? Let us know if we get any more comments. I just don't want to miss anything because the, the comment computer is way on the other side of the... Yep, we got that one. Thank you very much. All right, so now it's all of St. Clair's Brigade. He's going to fire point blank into these guys as they come out of their barracks. The Americans have to pretty much break Grenadier Regiment Rawl now. If they don't, the Americans pretty much lose the game. So we're hoping for a good roll. That is one. That is two. That is three. That is four. Ooh, that is five. That was nice. All right, cool. That's five saves. Again, the save is a six, uh, adjusted to a uh, an eight. Fail, fail. That's a hit. That's a successful save. Fail, fail. One, two, three, four. Four more figures have now been eliminated. That was four hits in a single fire phase. In battle system terms, that is another morale check. Again, 13. The more morale checks you can force your enemy to endure, the more likely they miss one, and then, you know, now, now you're doing pretty well. 17! That's on camera, right? You guys can see that? 17. That is... Grenadier Regiment Rawl is now shaken. Awesome. All right. I was kind of hoping that was going to happen. Okay, now what else we got going on here? Over here, we've got Glover's Brigade. Glover's Brigade had to shrink to a frontage of four to, in order to fit through this little alleyway here. And again, rifles and muskets can fire two ranks deep. So even though there's 10 figures in this unit, only eight of them can actually you know, fire right now because it's four times two ranks. So let me make sure I get the right number of D4s. Um, that's not nearly as good this time. Literally one hit. That four right there. Glover, you guys suck. Um, all right, let's see if they make their save. They did not make their save. That's another Hessian regiment down. Or, not regiment, another Russian, uh, Hessian squad knocked out. That was not nearly as impressive. By the way, let's go ahead and get some musket smoke on here. Not only does it make the table look cool, but now we know who's fired and who hasn't. All right. Um, the last American unit that can fire at the moment is going to be these um, oh, these raffling over here. So, five riflemen. Let me get the range on that. I think they're within point blank range, though. The range is 5 inches for muskets for point blank, 10 medium, 15 long. For rifles, it is um, 6, sorry, 8, 16, 24. So if I'm within 8 inches, cool. Now, this is a different regiment. This is Nipausen Regiment. So I'm hoping to get two regiments shaken first turn. It's, it's a long shot, but if I make it, it's awesome. The problem is, these rifles fire a D8 instead of a D4, as well as having an extended range. The problem is, they have a much, much, much slower rate of fire. You only fire once a turn, not twice. So this opportunity pass-through fire that they're about to take here is their only shot of this turn. It took a lot longer to load a rifle. This is not Sharps rifles where you can fire a rifle three times a minute. This is not what's going on here. 
I only have 48s. There's five figures there. So we're going to have to roll one dice after this. That's a miss. That's a hit. A seven is two hits. A seven is two. Oh, that was a seven. That seven is two more hits. One, two, three, four, five. Five total hits. That is um, Nipausen Fusiliers. Their morale starts at a seven. It's now a nine. I'm sorry, their save is a seven. It goes to a nine because flanking fire. So hopefully I can force another morale check. Uh, that is no saves. Nothing here is a nine or a ten. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. Chin, is the focus okay? Okay, thank you. So that is five figures knocked out. Awesome. That's going to trigger two morale checks. One for the first figure lost, and the second one for losing, uh, taking four or more hits in a single fire phase. Again, this is a different regiment. So they have a, a separate uh, uh, series of morale triggers that they have to deal with. So here comes the first one. Twelve. They did make it. Now the second one for losing four or more figures. Fifteen. They're shaking as well. It paid off. It paid off. I was hoping I was going to get that done. And what can I say? I got a little lucky there. This might be a short stream, guys. Nipausen Regiment is now also shaking. Cool. Can you, can you guys see that up there? All right, so we've got uh, Nipausen Regiment and now also has a shaking counter next to it, as well as Grenadier Regiment and all of them. So there are three Russian, uh, Russian, excuse me, three Hessian regiments on the board, the heavy infantry, Grenadier Regiment Wall. They're now, they've taken a lot of casualties and they're already shaken. That's good news. Nipausen Regiment, taking pretty serious casualties. They're also shaken. That's more good news. Lossberg Regiment, is that even on camera? Lossberg Regiment way over there, still in bed. So, so far, the Americans are doing pretty well. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing any other units that the Americans can fire. I'm pretty sure everything else is out of range. So I've already fired, uh, I've already fired Glover's Brigade, Sergeant's Brigade, oops, it's not even on camera. Sergeant's Brigade, I've already fired, what's that, St. Clair's Brigade, yep. And I fired um, Sullivan's Rifleman. Everything else is further down there. Nothing's even close to being in range yet. So, okay, I think that's going to conclude American pass-through fire uh, for the turn. That concludes Hessian movement. We did American movement long before the stream even started. This is the, yeah, the tail end of turn three. This is the bottom of the third, so to speak. Now we actually enter the, the, uh, the missile combat phase. So American units can shoot, uh, pretty much any musket can shoot twice. Once during the enemy's movement phase, if you weren't asleep, Hessians, I'm looking at you. And um, again, during your actual combat phase, exception, the riflemen cannot shoot twice. So those riflemen that literally blew the wing clean off of Nighthouse and Fusiliers, they're done for the turn, unfortunately. I would love to shoot those riflemen again, but unfortunately I can't. So now, however, the bad news for the Americans is the two sides actually trade fire back and forth. So here's where it gets ugly. Because now the Hessians actually get to shoot back a little. And it's not so good. Okay, let me get my uh, thing here. Now, who do I shoot first? Because the Americans get to shoot first, but they only get to shoot one unit first. Then the Hessians get to shoot a unit. Then I'm going to shoot a unit and back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, the problem is, what unit can actually really see me and do a lot of damage? These guys don't have arc on me. These guys maybe have some arc on my rifleman, but not much. Also, my rifleman are in skirmish formation. That gives them a pretty good save. I'm not too worried about them. That last guy, he's. I'm not worried about him at all. I think the biggest threat is this semi put together battalion down here there's still what is that uh seven figures that's 140 men and they're looking right down the throat of glover's brigade so glover your stupid 
Massachusetts Marble Hiders, you are going to go ahead and take your actual combat phase shot now. And I hope you do better this time, because you kind of sucks during, uh, during pass-through fire. Again, there's only eight figures eligible to fire there. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has to go well. One hit, two hits, three hits, four hits. All right, I went a little bit better that time. Four total hits. That's going to be four saves. Again, versus an eight. One save. That's three more figures knocked down. Is this regiment down to 50%? They started off with 24 figures. That's 6, 10, 11. Uh, give me a second, guys. No, these guys back here are still here. Okay, never mind. If you get down to 50% losses, that forces another check. And then you have to take another check for every single figure you lose after that. I was hoping to break Grenadier Regiment Raw before they even got a chance to shoot back. It didn't quite happen. Um, so these four guys will get a chance to shoot back. Okay. Same shot back. Again, smooth war muskets. They get the same D4 as everyone else. There's only four of them, though. Come on, guys. The good news is, Lover is in formation, so he gets a normal save. Again, they only, they only have four accounts. Not a single hit. Not one. That's a three. Miss. That's a two. Miss. That's a one. Miss. That's a three. Miss. So far, history is holding up. Okay, so that was good. Um, camera's starting to get a little wonky there. Sorry about that. All right, next we've got these six guys. We're going to go ahead and try and draw a bead on my rifleman. Good news is they're outside of they're outside of, of short range. They're within ten, outside of five, so they get half firepower. Also, not all of them have line of sight because of this building right here. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four of them. Eh, let's be generous. Let's say five. Five of them can shoot. Divide that in half makes three. So three D4s. Hopefully I continue to get lucky. Okay, that time the Hessians did score a hit. Miss, miss, that four is a hit. So the Americans have to make one save. Let me go get my rifleman card so I can make sure I have the right save. They uh, save on the American Rifleman. Make sure that's on camera. Is that in focus, John? The actual card? Oh, there's a little bit of latency there. Is that a little bit better? Anyway, you guys can see. I know it says armor rating. Please, please ignore that. That's the name of the trait in battle system. It's really just a save. It's a formation save. No one is wearing actual armor. That's just what they call it in battle system. That's pretty much the save you get. So I gotta roll a six up. Please. A five! The Americans failed. The Americans lose a figure. What did I say, guys? One American figure down. The Americans can technically still win. They're technically still winning. That's the casualty pile so far. One American and all those Hessians. If we can keep that up, the Americans still lose. So it doesn't look like the Americans are losing, but when you actually look at the balance, the Americans are actually losing this game so far. So we'll see what happens. Put the bridge back where it was. Alrighty. So that's pretty much everyone's fire phase um, until we get to the next turn. Because nobody else has range or line of sight or yeah, is even close to engaging, much less 
Holy crap. Um, over here. That whole side of the battlefield is still way too far away to actually um, get to anything good. So, that's going to conclude the combat phase. Technically, those American guns on the high ground down there do have range, but again, they are still limber. They have to spend one more movement phase to unlimber. But that's why they're not shooting yet. Alright, so that concludes turn three. Um, one thing that does have to happen is all of these guys... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. A slight rules problem. Slight rules problem. Give me two seconds. Give me just a second. Uh, the problem came when that Hessian um, unit was shaken. I'm going to put that American figure that was lost back on the table just for a second. Bear with me. We'll come back to him in just a second. That may not have happened. Sorry about that. All right, so what happened was when this Grenadier Regiment became shaken and failed that morale check, it has to back up immediately four inches. So the only thing I'm really concerned with is when this unit here had to back up four inches. Did they still have the line of sight to actually take that shot in the first place? Just let me remeasure that again. Is that on camera? Hopefully, yes. So that's that's backing up four inches. You guys can see all that oh, without me slamming the camera around. Where? Oh, maybe not. Where is that stupid thing? Come on, camera, give me a break, huh? So the guys I'm talking about are right here. They were here. They took a shot at these Americans. What I forgot is that they were supposed to back up four inches when they became shaken. When uh, Grenadier Regiment Wall became shaken. Where is that shaken counter? Here it is. Um, when they became shaken. Now, do they still have a line of sight on these Americans? It doesn't look like it. So I don't think that shot ever took place. In fact, these guys had to back up about four inches. They're kind of disordered. Um, that line of sight is still there, so that shot still happened. Uh, all right, I think we'll go ahead and call it for now. We'll have these guys back up a little bit. They just got to back up like f a little bit further away than the, from the closest uh, enemy. And again, these guys are a little loose, a little rough and ready with their formation because they are not in a formation. So they're going to spend part of their movement phase next turn actually getting into formation. So as you can see, hopefully, things are real chaotic here. These guys are trying to get in formation. These guys are trying to get in formation. We've got American riflemen here shooting across the street into night pals, and these guys fell back, so they didn't have a line of shot on those riflemen. This wing of Grenadier, of Grenadier Regiment Wall is pretty much blown off already. Glover's Regiment down here has kind of redeemed itself and pushed these guys back. They still haven't suffered 50% casualties, though. I can't believe that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This guy's got to move back from the That guy is with Nipehausen. So he falls back without knocking over the fence. And then that, these guys way over here, you guys can probably barely see them. These guys way over here, they're also technically part of Nighthouse. I'm sorry, a, a Grenadier Regiment Wall was gone. So, crap. Grenadier Regiment Wall was huge. Was I destroyed? How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine of them. Those other five are from Nighthouse. Okay, so never mind. It makes sense. Nine out of 22. There's still 13 figures left. That's not 50% yet. 
All right, awesome. No worries there. Cool. So the Americans are back down to zero cat through zero figures lost so far. Again, they're really only allowed to lose one. So you got to be really careful with American casualties. Or else the game kind of flies out the window too quickly. All right, we made a quick correction there. Um, sorry about that, but we are now correct and online to begin turn four. So everyone close your eyes for a second. The camera's going to get uh, a little wobbly for a second. I get around the other side of the table, take a quick check, a uh, quick break for a drink. Hold on, guys, sorry. The way this camera is mounted is a little bit of a pain. All right, cool. Hopefully that's a little bit better. All right, and we will check out some comments. How are we doing on comments? Okay, cool. Uh, ben says, I got to root against the Patriots today. They're playing against my Bills. Okay, if you're talking about the football Patriots, that's fine. Just not these Patriots. Unless you're a godless Hessian mercenary. That, that's something, that's not the whole kettle of fish. All right, I'm going to take a quick pause for a drink. Give me a second, guys. Oh, let me not drink in your ear there. All right. We're going to begin turn four. So, so far, it's going pretty well. I'll start down here on this end of the table. Where, because um, we, we pretty much just did a lot of combat over there on the other American wing down by Sullivan's division. So, just to kind of mix things up for the moment, we're going to start with uh, the American center. That is a center and left wing. That's the general Nathaniel Green's division. So let's do the easy part first. Movement phase. Artillery is now unlimbered. That took them their whole movement phase, but that artillery is now ready to shoot during the, movement phase, during the combat phase. So good news there. Now let's do some other movement. Thanks very much, especially Dylan for showing up today. Good God, man. It's, uh, what, 5 o'clock in the morning over there? All right, so I'm going to start off with these riflemen. Is that on camera? Sorry about that. I'm going to start off with these riflemen. They are in skirmisher formation. They're in column, or column slash skirmisher. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them to online. That cuts their movement from 24 inches down to 12 inches, and I'm pretty much going to line them up to start actually shooting at some people. Uh, so they're skirmishers, 12 inches. Yeah, we're going to set up a firing line behind this fence. So skirmishers don't move base to base like formation guys in like a you know rank and file game. They're much more, well, like a skirmish game because they're skirmishers. Um, they have to have some space between their bases and they move individually. So they're actually easier to move. Um, they can never come into frontal base-to-base -base contact with enemy regular formations. They have a whole bunch of disadvantages. And these guys, these American riflemen, have zero melee. They are absolutely pitifully helpless in a bayonet fight. So if uh, these fusiliers or these grenadiers actually charge them in a the bayonet, uh, the bayonet charge, they run away or they die. That's because the American rifle at the time could not accept the bayonet. We're not talking about Sharps rifles. This is 40 years before Sharps rifles. The American rifle was even more accurate than a Sharps rifle. However, it took three times, it took three times as long to load, and it was uh, it couldn't accept a bayonet. It was a civilian hunting weapon. Okay. Meanwhile, Fermoist Brigade. Fermoist Brigade is currently in column. I need to change that. Lost Bird down here is about to wake up. Damn it, you guys still haven't seen this on camera. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm afraid Lostberg over here to the left, is about to wake up out of his barracks. So, Firmoist Brigade, I wanted to move a little bit down the road and form into line. The problem is, uh, he's, I have to change formation on the march. So, he's currently got a frontage of two. 
Uh, I want him to have a frontage of five. So the difference there is three. That cost me three inches of movement. Metal system has a great system for changing formation. It's nice and easy to remember. Um, I think some other systems have copied it since then. Again, this came from 1989. So it's, it's pretty solid. So first thing I'm gonna do is move the command group out of the way. And then we're actually gonna move these guys. Again, their movement is normally nine for medium infantry or for line infantry. Reduced by three, change formation. That becomes a six. So they gotta get to here. The good news, they will be in line formation. Two ranks of five. Oop, that's right for me. Come back to him in a second. These last two guys are riflemen. They move as skirmishers. So they can't quite reach the fence, but they can get close. Alright, and that is Firmoy's Brigade in their approximate historical location. In reality, they were kind of more coming in on this end. Not like this, but they're, they're good enough for now. Alrighty, awesome. Uh, Stevens Brigade is going to go ahead and move. Uh, first of all, can any Hessians take pass through fire? No, because they're still asleep and they're falling close. But just let's just keep things uh, keep things going the way it's supposed to. Be. Stevens Brigade. Stevens Brigade historically was pretty much here, so I'm going to try to get them there, and I'm going to keep them in column formation because they have a long distance to travel. And again, so far they're pretty safe. So they're going to stay at 18 inches, which is pretty much double movement. We're going to cross that bridge and then turn a little bit. Is that showing up on camera? Yes. So, measuring from the front of the unit, you're going to wind up pretty much here. Uh, however, still in column. Which isn't great. But I think I can get, a, I, I think I can get away with it for one more turn. Some of these guys are still going to be on the bridge. The problem is the guys don't sit too well on this bridge. So I'm just going to put them here for now, but they're on the back of that car. Stevens Brigade, the command group itself. Has much better movement. It's 12 inches on foot, 24 inches on uh, horseback. So that's going to be the command group for Stevens Brigade. All right. So the American left wing is starting to come together a little bit. Okay. Let me try and get the American center in order here. Put the camera up. All right. So now we're talking about Mercer's Brigade, Green's actual command group, Sterling's the um, opposite division. Uh, Sterling's Brigade, and so on. Hopefully you guys can see all this. What's One thing that we have to watch out for is to keeping the fire lanes clear for this artillery. So if you stack up a bunch of guys right in front of your guns, you will literally be shooting your own guys in the back. So I have to keep at least some of the central area clear uh, so that the artillery can actually get some more. So we have to figure out how I'm going to Mercer is going to move forward and wheel. There's no pivoting allowed in battle system. Uh, unlike some initial earlier editions of Kings of War. I hear they fixed this in Kings of War recently. But at the, at the, in earlier editions, you were allowed to pivot a line formation, which is absurd. 
Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this as our hinge where my thumb is. I'm really hoping this is on camera. And we're going to, because the camera's on the other side of the table right now, we're going to try and pivot them this way so I can put some fire on the other half of Wall's uh, brigade, or uh, Wall's command group and the last bit of his regiment there uh, during the fire phase. And then he's going to be kind of exposed, keep this fire lane open for American artillery, and we're going to reinforce with Sterling's brigade uh, later on in the movement phase. So I'm going to keep this guy in place. These guys are going to pivot forward to about here. Uh, the system for wheeling motion is pretty simple. Just the, you know, whatever the normal um, movement rate for your guy is, for your unit. In this case, line infantry. Uh, line infantry in actual online formation is nine inches. You just don't want to move them. So triple check that, make sure I didn't move more than nine inches. I only moved not even seven, so we're good now. Himself. We still have our command diameter radius. Let's get green up here. Get out of the way of your own artillery. And that's when we move Washington across the board here. Let's get Washington. Sterling's brigade's got to hustle it up. They're too far behind. Uh, 18 inches in column. How close do I want to get in column? I can get as far as here. The problem is there are Germans right by us. They're facing the wrong way and they're not in formation yet. By the time they pivot on us, Mercer's brigade can shoot the hell out of them. I'm going to gamble. This might be a losing move here, but I'm going to gamble. So far, the Americans have been pretty lucky. Again, the Americans can only safely lose a single figure, not a unit, a figure. They can possibly still win. They probably win with two figures down. They could, if they're really lucky, win with three figures now. On four figures, they lost for sure. So my goal is to pretty much only lose one figure. All right, that's still one's brigade. Uh, all right, let me move the camera. Now we're going to move Sullivan's division over on the American right wing. Hold on, guys, sorry. For the jostling. I have to organize this a little bit better. I don't want to move too much. Like these guys here, Lover's Brigade, if I move them, they trigger opportunity fire from these clouds. So I don't know if I want to move them. They're just going to stand still and fire. You know what? They're going to move anyway. Because these guys would get passed through fire anyway. Opportunity to fire. The Germans do get to shoot back. The good news is, Lever, his uh, regiment, I'm sorry, his brigade, is now fully online. Oops, yeah, there's one more guy back there. Sitting in the wood pile. Alright, these four guys fire. Oh no! Stop shooting at us! Alright, oop, no box. Um, you guys probably can't read the dice from that far over, but... 
That is one hit. We save on a six. A nine. The Americans saved. So no uh, damage there. His pass through fire is complete. All right, cool. Got away with it. Um, what else is going on? These riflemen are going to pivot. See, if I pivot here to engage these guys, this guy's going to shoot me in the back. So i got to be careful with that. F uh, flanking fire is plus two to your save. The penalty. Sorry about that. Uh, flanking fire is plus two. Penalty to your to your save. Rear fire is plus four. You don't want to take. You, you don't want to get shot in the neck. But if these guys, if this guy shoots you in the back, or this guy is going to shoot me in the back, either way, I'm going to get shot in the back. I'd rather get shot in the back by one guy than shot in the back by six guys. So here we go. Here's where we could lose the game, folks. This guy shoots in the back, although at this range, hopefully it's, it's still within 10. It's half a dice, becomes one dice. Okay, 1d4, hopefully I get away with it. Yeah, I know this is too far, you guys probably can't see it. Oh, one, he missed, thank God, thank God. These six guys fire at me from the front. I think they're all within five inches. Ooh, actually, no, they're not. One guy's within five inches, two guys within five inches. The other four are more than five inches. One full dice, two full dice, half, 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 half. So one, two, three, four. I know you guys might not be able to see a lot of that past the church, but those six figures are gonna throw four dice because some of them are in range are in close range, some of them are at medium range. It's kind of a weird angle. So make sure I got the right number of dice here. The good news is this is coming out our front, so we get no penalty to our saving throw. Four ups to hit. One, three, two, three. The Americans are just smoking on the die on the luck rolls today. Alright. Cool. Um, St. Clair's Brigade is going to sidestep, advance, sidestep again. So it costs two to basically do a left face or a right face. They're then going to move, then they're going to face again. So basically I'm going to subtract four inches off my movement. Two and two, that's for two facings to the side. That leaves me with five inches of movement. They're pretty much going to end up right here. I'm getting ready to shoot down this street at the rest of Nyphausen and whatever's left of Grenadier Regiment Hall with uh, St. Clair's Regiment. These guys have already, uh, these Hessians further down the street have already taken their pass through fire, so no additional um, opportunity fire there. I probably got a little too aggressive with that five inches. Let me fix that. It's probably more accurate. Okay. There's too much terrain on this map. These buildings are all in the way. Uh, what am I doing with Sullivan's division? The rest of Sullivan's division. They're going to kind of do the same thing. They won't really have any targets this time, but... They're going to face to the left, and then boogie down the street in column. they've got protective units on their right flank and on their left flank. So I'm hoping they can get away with this. To 
be honest, the Americans have been getting away with a lot so far. I'm, I'm half afraid all of a sudden the other shoe is going to drop and the Americans are just going to run out of luck. Everything's going to go parachute. Okay, I think that's it for American movement phase. So we'll head over to Hessian movement phase. Oh, Rasmus has joined us. Hello, Rasmus. Thanks very much. Um, so if you're just now joining us, Rasmus, here is a quick look down the whole table. It's a full 8x4, 32 square feet. Um, again, that's north. West is the far side. East is the near side. And over there is the south end of the table. So we're looking at northern Trenton. And so far, the Americans are doing pretty well. The Americans have not lost a single figure yet, which is good because they're really only allowed to lose one figure while they table a force of 84 Hessian figures. Um, this is a very asymmetrical scenario. The Americans have every possible advantage in the book. Numbers, position, they hit the Hessians on three sides. They literally bayonet the first wave of them while they're still in their beds. It's a, it's a literal slaughter. And then they have them outnumbered, like over to one. The problem is they can't lose any more than like one, possibly two figures uh, out of a force of about, about I have about 100 American figures on the table. Maybe a little bit less. We got about 170 figures total. Okay, so now I'm going to start moving around some missions. So the first thing that's going to happen is, is this on camera? Yes. All right, these guys pull together. They're now in formation. No more penalties on their saving throw actually formed a little bit of a, of a battle line there. Second piece of movement, this artillery battery is no longer limbered. It's now ready to fire. That's a Hessian six-pounder. Double fortified brass six-pounder. That's that's not so good. I think I know what green, I'm sorry, what Glover is going to shoot at next turn. Oh boy. Okay, these guys are going to pull together and form an actual unit. This guy falls back, forms a unit. Now the, the weird thing is, or the good news is, this is what's left of, uh, you can't see this one unit's behind this house, I'm sure. Uh, but this unit here is shaken. This is uh, Rawls Grenadiers. We have done enough damage, forced a couple lucky morale fit, uh, checks, and forced it to break. So these Hessians have been moving. Pass through fire. Glover is firing on this artillery. Everything he's got. I gotta knock out that artillery before it shoots at me. If I take a double fortified brass six pounder to the face at less than 10 inch, uh, five inches, that's not gonna be good. I'm gonna lose a figure. Because, spoiler alert, there is no save, no saving throw against artillery. It rolls 2d10s at that range, and you just suck it. Whatever it rolls, it hits. That will literally lose the Americans the game right there. All right, Glover, this is no time to whiff another roll. You got to do it. Is this on camera? I got the wrong dice box. I have a total of 10 figures. Glover's whole brigade is now finally in the correct formation to actually fire all its weapons. It was not earlier. So I'm making sure I got the right number of dice. All right, here we go. There goes a the dice, I'll pick it up later. All right, here we go. D4s, because I'm, I'm well within five inches there. One hit. Glover, you gotta be shitting me. That's only two hits. Oh, damn you, Glover. Oh, that's not good. Glover, you're about to piss me off. You and your crappy uh, Massachusetts guys. 
Okay, let's try and save that artillery. Now, they were still getting in formation, so they will still take the formation save. So I fired while they were forming up their formation. Uh, so their save goes to an A-plus on D10s. Uh, they did save one. So that's only one down. Okay, we might still be able to save that. We might still be able to save that, but it's... That's got me worried. That's got me worried. I'm not gonna lie. These Americans, only some of them can fire because of this buildings in the way. Um, like it looks like maybe f six figures can clip this. I know you can't really see it. There's a unit of seven um, raw grenadiers sitting back there. So give me a second. Uh, what did I say? Uh, yeah, six figures. Um, not within five inches. So we're going to reduce that uh, six dice down to three dice. And that's only going to be one hit. Um, again, they were still pulling in formation, so the save is still um, A+. Plus. Oh, that's not a save. Another Hessian figure down. Chipping away at him, guys. Ready? Let me finish up Rawls uh, regiment. Okay, so these guys are gonna go ahead and now. Do they face this way against the American riflemen, or do they face this way against two full brigades of Americans? This is a solitaire game. Normally, this would be a decision. Um, oh, is that what's actually showing right now? No, what's actually showing right now, Jen? Is that what's live? I'm, I'm pointing at things that people can't see. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Give me one second, Jen. All right, so these six guys are in a rock and a hard place. There's about 800 Americans coming down this road here. There's more Americans coming down this way. So normally this would be a, a decision that the enemy player would make. There is no enemy player here. It's a solitaire game. I'm just going to roll a d10. Odds they turn this way. Evens they turn this way. Evens that way. Evens they turn this way. That was probably not the right move. Because now riflemen are going to shoot him in the back. And there goes a tree. Uh, sorry about that. Pass through fire. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I need my tape measure. Um, they're longer than eight, but less than 16, so they're medium range. That's only half firepower. One, two, three, four, five. Five divided by two is two and a half. Basically, that becomes three. So 3d8s, that's a d10. Miss, two hits, two hits, that's four total hits. Save gets reduced from a six to a 10 because they're being shot in the back now. So what I say, four hits, four hits against the 10. Here comes the first three, oh, here they are. Four dice against the 10. Oh, they missed all four. That's four more hits in a single fire step. That means another morale check for uh, Grenadier Regiment Rawl. They are, are they down to 50% yet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They started with 24, they are exactly at 50%. Let me look up a rule here super fast. Is it at 50% or below 50%? If at least 50% of the unit's figures have been removed. Okay, it triggers it now. So, that's another trigger and it's a penalty. Negative two. So, their morale for Hessian Grenadiers uh, 
Their morale started off at a 14. Their morale is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it's now knocked down to a 12. Because uh, they're at 50%. And now, every single figure that that regiment loses, they have to take another morale check. So a 12 or more on 2d10 would be nice. Nine. They stay shaken. Uh, okay, cool. So these guys have taken their pass through fire. They will not get to shoot again during the combat phase. These rifles only shoot once. Other German group. We only have one regiment left. That's, uh, Eiphausen. Man, I gotta get more organized here. Move my stuff all over the table. And I understand we have some more comments, guys. Let me finish up my pausen, and then I'll get caught up on the comments. You gotta get at least one regiment, like, get their shit together here. Have at least a little bit of a battle. Instead of just a slaughter. Which is kind of how the battle went. I'm actually, historically, I'm really pleased with this. So notice these guys are now in, uh, make sure you guys can see that. Nope, sure can. I think the, the, the church is in the way. Yeah, we're talking about these guys here. Um, notice they're now like base-to-base -base contact. They're in a proper uh, rank and file kind of a formation. Their command group is online. They're actually kind of getting put together here pretty well. Very good. Get the colonel out in front with their drummer and their flautist, because Hessians, Germans in general, were really good to the flute. We talked about that previously. All right, so their command group is now deployed. Let me see what else is going on down here. We've got some more night housing. Oh, what am I doing? Nipausen is shaken. They can't move towards the enemy. They'll move towards the enemy because the enemy's not in range of them anyway. But let me remember that for next turn. I forgot Nipausen was shaken. Probably shouldn't have done that. But no worries. I've already made too many moves mistakes. Shaken units don't run away. They just, uh, they can't technically move closer. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, they can't technically move closer um, to the enemy. I know I'm doing it right now, but the enemy's so far away, it's, it's fine. I'm not going to begrudge the Hessians a little bit of an amnesty here. The Americans have been so lucky so far. Okay. Last thing to do. Well, number one, I'm going to catch up on comments here. So, oh, wow, Vorpal Bites joined us. Cinedave is with us. Oh, wow, we got lots of people here. Okay, cool. Um, I, let me let me scroll up here, and we'll get caught up on comments. Cool. Merry Christmas, gamers, says Vorpal Bite. Vorpal Bite, thanks very much. The terrain is beautiful. I super appreciate it, Vorpal Bite. Thanks very much. Um, again, it's an 8x4 table um, in 20 millimeter scale. Been building it for a couple days, a uh, little piece at a time. The buildings I've been building, you guys have seen the previous streams. I've been building it for about two weeks. And the armies I've been, you know, slowly clipping together for off and on for like a couple of years, probably. Um, the last thing that we built was uh, the historically accurate maps. I'm sorry, historically accurate flags. Um, the flags I had before were either too early still had the Grand Union flag from 1775. Trust me, that flag has been burned and retired. Um, and I still had some 1777 flags. The Bennington Spirit of 76 flag, that doesn't work. The Betsy Ross flag, that doesn't work. Here we have some Gadsden flags. Uh, this got off a monstrosity. And some other stuff that was, you know, actually in place during the Battle of Trenton. 
So I appreciate that. The Germans might be in trouble. Yeah, again, um, the Germans are going to be curb stomped. Uh, Trenton is a game that's great for solitaire play because the Germans don't stand a chance. It's can you beat the Germans and not lose any figures? Like, not one. Uh, here, the Americans can lose one figure. If they lose two, they probably win. There's a dice mechanic involved. If they lose three, they probably lose. If they lose four, they definitely lose. In so doing, they have to table a force of 84 Hessians, Hessian figures. So it's got to be a curb stop. Roper Bike got his Twilight tw uh, 2000 4th edition for Christmas. Awesome. Um, I have the PDFs for that, and I am reading it. Uh, I'm getting interested in that for sure. Uh, what did you guys get for Christmas? I got some pretty good Waffen SS paint. Uh, I'm not sure about everybody else in the chat. Um, Jennifer Lemon says, if the Germans aren't in trouble, the Patriots are seriously in trouble. This is true. Um, one spot the the uh, one spot I'm already very concerned about, the Germans might turn it around. That artillery. That six-pounder. If Glover... Okay, we've do, we're doing the pass-through fire now. Immediately after pass through fire comes the actual missile fire phase. If I use my very first missile fire step to put Glover's shot into that artillery and I kill that artillery, fine. If I don't, he's going to use my non existent Hessian opponent. He's going to use his first missile step and put that artillery, again, uh, brass, double fortified six pounder, less than five inches, square into the face, no save, into Glover's uh, brigade. I'm going to lose at least two or three figures there, and that's probably going to be game. So the Americans are actually about to lose this game right now, believe it or not. Uh, hello, Cynadave. Thank If I'm saying that right, Cynadave, Cynadave. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm even coming close to pronouncing that right. If not, I do apologize. Um, battle or ambush, says um, Rasmus. It's always seemed more like an ambush than a real battle. That's absolutely correct. Trenton is... Uh, a, a, a controlled car crash uh, of a battle. It's not even close. What's the difference? Oh my god, Roper Bite with the dad jokes. Roper Bite says, what is the difference between beer nuts and deer nuts? One is $1.99 per pound and the other is just under a buck. Oh, for the love of god. Roper Bite. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to tell any jokes because um, Roper Bite's got the jokes for me. Um, Little Wars did a what if in Trenton in 10 millimeter. Uh, what if, as in what if the uh, what if the Hessians were awake? That would have been a slaughter. You would have definitely lost that battle, or at least not won it as badly as uh, as it took place in real life. Roper Bite says, um, Roper Bite says, do you guys know about the new game Silver Bayonet? Yes, I am aware of that. It is basically pulp horror and weird version of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, the Napoleonic Wars uh, crossed with. Uh, the Walking Dead. Oh, Napoleonic Zombie Managers. You answered the question right after that. Cool. Um, so I am thinking, why not make the Germans zombies? Because today is December 26th, 2021. It's the 245th anniversary of the Battle of Trenton. We're going to do it historically um, at least once. And uh, I mean, after that, we can you know, play it two different versions of it. Um, let me make sure we're not missing anything in, because we always miss the comments in Facebook. I don't want to do that. Um, Facebook, if you guys are commenting and we don't see it, that's on me. Let me make sure we're not, uh, yeah. I apologize if we're missing comments in YouTube. I'm sorry, not YouTube, uh, in Facebook. Let me just quickly check Facebook for two more seconds here. See, I'm still not seeing any of your comments yet in Facebook. There's something going wrong with Facebook's comments. Okay, now I do. Well, the one video is, yeah, it's, it's, it's dead. 
Oh, are there any comments in the other one? Okay, that's why I can't see the comments in the other one. Okay, so yeah, let's keep an eye on that one. Sorry about that, guys. And last but not least, let me take a quick peek at Mr. Twitch. Make sure we're not missing anything there. Oh, Tuffy Ears is still seasick. Sorry about that. All right, so it looks like we're mostly in YouTube. Tuffy Ears. Oh, who would have guessed you didn't get a save from a huge ball of iron hitting you square in the chest? Yeah, um, I don't I don't give saves for, uh, for artillery, especially at close range. Uh, no saves for artillery, and um, rifle fire, especially in the back, is effectively no save. Uh, your save is technically a 10 on a D10. So it's pretty much no save. Okay, so we're caught up on comments now. Let's go ahead and continue with movement on turn four. Okay. These guys have officially woken up. All this cannon artillery fire signal or musket fire is going on. Like one regiment's pretty much already been butchered in place. Um, it would technically be a, we're now on turn four, which means it's a four down on a D6. Plus one for Americans in uh, proximity. That technically makes it a five down. And now there's been actual gunfire. Let's add another one to that. Now it's a six down. You can't not roll a six on a D6. So boom. Okay, Lossberg is finally woken the hell up. Lossberg, it's about time. Get your lazy asses out of bed. Problem is they're gonna suffer all the problems that the other guys did. Bailing out of a barracks into American musket fire. Uh well disordered. So again, I'm putting them on here sloppily on purpose because they're not in any kind of formation yet. So they're kind of in like a disordered status. What the hell is going on out here? Who's making all that noise? Oh shit, we're under attack. God damn. Ah, Himmel, was ist los? Nein! I just caught a musket ball to the face. Das ist nicht gut. I would apologize to the Germans, but the hell with them, man. They, they, they deserve it. Or at least the, these Germans deserve it. Alright, cool. So these guys are pretty much piled out of their little barracks there. They're all in a, in a blithering state. He comes out of that little farmhouse. Now, these last four figures, these are the Jaegers. I'm going to have them come out the back door so they don't immediately get shot to pieces. I want to see what the Jaegers do at least a little bit. There was a small contingent of German riflemen. Not muskets, riflemen. So we're going to give the Hessians a little bit of a break and say they came out the back door so they don't walk right into all this mess. Okay, historical moment. Osberg Regiment piles out of that building into American cannon fire. Now, American, uh, again, American cannons, they do not get, uh, they only get to fire once a turn. So if they take pass through fire, that's all they can do. Yeah, they're taking it. This is something that happens historically. So I wanted to see it happen at least once on the table. Knox, unlimited his artillery in the American movement phase. You guys probably can't see that. Can you guys see it when I point to the American artillery? Hell no. Sorry about that, guys. American artillery opens fire on Lossberg coming out of that building. It's a long range shot, but that's what artillery's for. You got three guns. Their range brackets are 15 inches, 30 inches, 45 inches. Short range, medium range, long range. So I'm pretty sure it's medium range. It is not, it is long range. It is more than 30 inches. God damn these eight foot tables. World War Bite, what are you doing to me? Making me play miniatures. That's not cool. In fact, this one is barely within long range. Holy crap, that's like exactly 45 inches. 44 inches, 43 inches. Okay, so when you are within your short range, you get full dice. So from zero to 15 inches, you get your full dice. Medium range, between your short range and your medium range band, you get half dice. Out to your long range score, 45 inches, you get one third dice. So I've got three guns, one, two, three. They each fire two D10s. That's a total of six D10s for the battery. And it is cut down to one third because of one third range, 
or one third firepower due to uh, extended range. <clears throat> Excuse me, extended range. I'm starting to lose my voice. So we're looking at two dice. However, there are two d10s, and there is no save. So here we go. Ooh, that two kind of sucked. That seven counts as two. So I probably should cover this, in case anyone's wondering. Again, the system we're using is Battle System 2nd Edition, published 1989. And this is the hit chart. So if you roll a 1, 2, or a 3, it scores 0 hits. 4 or 5 counts as 1 hit. 6 through 9 counts as 2 hits. 11, 10 to 11 is 3 hits. And 12 plus is 4 hits. Needless to say, you have to have bigger dice to even score some of these numbers. It's really hard to roll a D, a roll 12 on a D. So that's why muskets have to roll a 4 to score a hit, because a 1 through 3 is nothing. 2 D10s, I got a 2 and a 7. So that 2 counts as 0, and that 7 counts as 2 hits. That's how I got that number. So, back down here. This unit just lost two figures. That causes two morale checks. One morale check for the first figure in a regiment lost. That's the first figure that Lostburg Fusiliers has lost. Their, um, what is their, uh, morale 12. So they have to roll 12 or less on a 2d10s. First one for uh, a first one for losing the first figure. 13. They're now shaken. Now they have to take another casualty point, another morale check for being hit with artillery. Artillery triggers an additional uh, uh, penalty point. And that is a nine. Even if we we'll apply the negative two to your morale for being shaken, they just got shaken and they have to take another morale check immediately after that. Even if I apply that negative two instantly, which I think you're actually supposed to do, um, that makes their morale now a 10. That nine still succeeds. So they're only shaken. I thought maybe they would get routed. All three German regiments are now shaken. We are not doing too bad. And that's it for American artillery fire. American musket fire. Except I don't know if I'm in range. Ooh, barely. So hopefully you guys can see that. Yep. It is within, ooh, barely, within 15 inches. So it's gonna be one third attack. There's a total of 10 figures there. So that's gonna be three. That's only three. So only three D4s here. Um, I'm gonna give the uh, Hessians a bonus to their save because I have to shoot through that fence. So they get a little bit of a terrain bonus. So this shot will not be devastating, but every little bit helps. Uh, no hits. All right, so the Americans missed for a change. Good news for the Americans, there are some riflemen here. And like I said, I was kind of getting them ready. So I had a feeling Lost Bird was gonna wake up this time. I am 12 inches away. So again, American riflemen, their range brackets are 8, 16, and 24. So I'm within medium range there. So it's only half dice penalty. These guys are too far back. You can't shoot through uh, your friendlies. Well, actually, they're skirmishers. You can. Are they also within 16? Yeah. Okay, I'll shoot those two figures as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Half of seven is four. Four D8s. If I can find some more D8s, there we go. And again, that's going to be it for the rifle. All the musky guys get to shoot again, not the rifle. Four is one hit. Three is a miss. Four is one hit. Eight is, I think, two hits. Where's that book I was just showing everybody? Yeah, two hits. So we're looking at a total of four hits. One, two, three, four. 
normal cover save or normal uh, formation save is eight plus sorry six plus it now goes up to eight plus because that unit is taking flanking fire it's not yet in formation so it basically goes up to an eight and they save three times nine ten nine save 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 only one additional hit oh crap Hessians got lucky for a change. Damn. And that is these riflemen having all fired. Last little bit of pass through fire. That formation. Where's my little poker stick? Where's my little general stick? This unit is still in column formation. They ain't shooting at shit. This unit, however, is online. It's going to take pass through fire uh, against this command group and against those last two Hessian Grenadiers um, coming down the road here. You want to do every little figure of damage you possibly can against Grenadier Regiment Wall right now because Grenadier Regiment Wall is less than 50% figures. Every single figure they hit or they lose is now another morale trigger. Negative two for being less than 50%, negative one for being shaken. Once I have them routed, they're routed. I can just, well, I can just forget about them. They're broken. And Raul ain't, ain't rallying the shoes. I'm about ready to shoot his ass too. Uh, Raul being the German commander. Okay, so let me get a, a quick measurement on my range. I'm pretty sure that's a long range shot. It's more than 10. That's long range. There are 15 figures in that unit, so it goes down to five. And the Germans will get a negative two because, oh no, they're actually in formation now. Sorry. They'll get a plus one on their save because of that fence. Have to shoot through that fence. Miss, 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 miss. They all missed. I told you the American loss, the American luck would uh, suddenly evaporate. I think it's starting to. Mercer, you suck. I think that's going to be it for American pass through fire. We now start combat phase on turn four. Once I check Mr. Chat. Oh boy. Uh, Jennifer Lemon says that like that one shot in the crossing. You're talking about where wall get hits. The cannon goes right into them as they come out of the building. Yeah, that, that, that historically happened. That's kind of what we just saw. Uh, Vorpobite says, oh my god, Santa Claus has a toy soldier army in his toy sack. Poor zombies are doomed yet again. Um, Vorpobite, I'm not sure if you saw our Santa Claus game yesterday. Check out our YouTube channel. Well, you're on our YouTube channel. Um, we had our Santa, our, our annual Santa Claus comes under attack. Oh, war game. We've been running that game since 2014. Oh, it looks like we're talking about that later on down in the chat. Awesome. Uh, ben Johnson says the table looks absolutely amazing. Thanks very much, Ben Johnson. Uh, Vorpal Bites, I can imagine the movie Santa Claus Conquers the Zombies. Uh, have you ever seen Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? I'm not making that up. Uh, that's a real movie. I'm sure you've seen it. Santa, beats the, uh, Santa beat the Soviets on Friday. Yes, they did. Well, technically Russians, but yeah, I know what you mean. In a world gone mad, there is still one man you can count on, Santa Claus, King of the North. That is true. He is 7-0 and in our Santa Claus attack games. He's never going to lose. I mean, what happens if he actually loses that game? I mean, come on. But technically, he is 7-0 and in our uh, North Pole Defense Force games. Santa did get shot out of the sky, though. That's true, Jennifer Levin. Uh, by a T-80. Uh, actually, it was a T-55. Uh, blew him out of the sky. The Bumble carried the day with a natural 20. That was an awesome moment. Uh, ben, you look like you should have been there for the weekend, too. Yeah, he's way up in North Carolina, so it's a bit of a stretch. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Ben knows battle system. Ben uh, could totally carry this game, although I don't think he'd want to play the Hessians. I mean, look at how the Hessians are doing so far. The Island of Misfit Miniatures. This is true. I remember that. Uh, I saw Rudolph Ridden on Dream here, right? The Island of Misfit Toys. Uh, one more next to the smoke. 
Rasmus says. Did I miss something? One more next to the smoke. I fired these guys. That's a command unit. They fired. That's a command unit. They're still in form uh, column formation. They can't fire. They fired. They're still in formation. Command unit. Command unit. There's still some shooting going on down there. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, if that's what you're talking about, Rasmus. Um, hopefully. Oh, Tuffy here says, oh, God, he got a swagger stick. Who let Jim loose with the swagger stick? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, General Riskini in the house. All people stand by. It gets serious from here. I'm sorry? Jason Weiser, hello on Facebook. Thanks very much for joining us. Battle of Trenton is probably about two-thirds through. The Americans are not doing too badly so far. All right, so Rasmus, these guys fired. These guys fired. They just whiffed. So if you're trying to alert me to something I forgot to fire. These guys technically fire, they just... Yeah, they missed. Um, these guys have no line of sight. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I missed something, let me know in the comments. I've checked what... Uh, I've checked everything I can see. I don't think we've missed anything so far. These... They, there's only two of them. Those two uh, Hessian... Uh, figures did not fire because at the beginning of their movement phase when the Americans were moving they weren't in range so they're not going to get pass through fire they're going to get regular combat fire but not pass through fire um Corporal Bite they are mercenaries they retire okay here's the weird thing about the Hessians um they called them mercenaries at the time for a couple reasons, two main reasons. Number one, the definition of the term mercenary was different in the 1700s than it is today. And number two, the Americans, the Patriots, really hated these guys. They committed some war crimes, they bayoneted Americans while they were trying to surrender at the Battle of Long Island at Brooklyn Heights. Um, so they were really hated. No one liked the British, nobody liked the Redcoats, etc., etc. But at least they spoke English. They were technically, you know, fellow Englishmen. So there was at least, you know, they went to the same church, they spoke the same language, they read the same songs, read the same poems. You know, there was a, there was a lot in common there. The Germans, they hated them. So they threw the ugliest word they could at them, and that's kind of what, what mercenary is. However, they weren't really mercenaries the way we think of mercenaries today. So they don't like go to like Soldier of Fortune magazine, take a big fat purse of gold, to go and, you know, bayonet American babies and throw them in a fire. That's not how it went. Um, the way it kind of went was King George III and some of the other noblemen in his court knew or were related to certain crown princes over in principalities and city-states in what is today considered Germany. The colloquial term is Hesse. That's somebody from the state of Hesse. Not all Germans in the American Revolution were from the state of Hesse. Some of them were from Saxony. Some of them were from Bavaria. Some of them were from, it begins with an A. I can't remember what the hell it was. They were from all over Germany. A lot of them were from Hesse, but not all of them. And it wasn't so much that they, they were like individual mercenaries. Oh, yes, I have a musket. I'll join your little force. Give me 100 pieces of gold, and I'll get on a boat and sail over to America and kill Americans. It wasn't like that. It was... King George knows or is related to Prince Humperdinck or whoever the hell, you know, it doesn't even matter, some random, you know, half-assed nobleman in Germany somewhere, um, and says, hey, I'll pay you, you know, 10,000 pieces of silver or whatever, 10,000 pounds, if I can rape one of your regiments for a year. And uh, so they were paid mercenaries in that way. I do think the Hessians did, like the individual soldiers, did get like a bonus to their pay, like like what we would consider combat pay um, today. But it's not like they were, you know, bloodthirsty mercenaries, kind of like we think of uh, mercenaries today. Um, yeah, Humperdinck. I get some random German half, you know, tin pot uh, king. When I say king or whatever, a prince or a lord, 
like the, the mayor of a certain town, like little little baby, uh, you know, half-ass nobleman, stuff like that. All right, so let me go ahead and get started here on. Um, first of all, let me plug in my laptop here, and then I'll get started on the combat phase for turn four. We're we're at least we're we're probably a little bit over halfway done here because the Hessians are really in trouble. Okay, here comes the scary part. Let me make sure we get the, the good spot on, on table here, or on camera. Uh, guys, forgive the camera shaking. While I maneuver this stupid thing. Yeah, I see it, John, I see it. Oh, sorry about that. But this is super important. The Americans could conceivably lose the game here. It's actually possible. So that's why I wanted to make sure we got this right. This little bastard right here. That little artillery piece versus Glover's Brigade. The Americans could totally lose the game right here could happen. Especially the way Glover's been rolling today. Come on, man. So we are now officially starting the fire phase. Um, make sure I get all the dice I need so I don't have to walk back over here. So we're now officially starting the fire phase. The way the fire phase works is two sides trade units. The Americans fire a unit, the Hessians fire a unit, and so on. The trick is the Americans have the initiative because it's Trenton. So they get to pick their first unit they want to fire. Because I'm not an idiot, I'm going to pick Glover's Brigade. Glover's Brigade has to fire and knock out at least two more figures on that, move that tree out of the way, so you guys can see. I've got to kill these two figures here. There's two crewmen. If I don't, it now becomes the Germans' turn. They're going to fire that artillery straight into Glover. Probably kill at least two or three figures, and that's probably game. So, here's hoping that doesn't happen. This is as close as it gets. I think if I can get past this, I think we got the game pretty much in the back. We've got 10 figures, all within 5 inches. We are uh, going to fire our full 10 dice then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make sure I got the right number of four siders. Come on, Glover. I'm not kidding this time. No more kidding around. We've got to do it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. There's one, there's two. There's three, there's four. Okay, that's not too bad. That's four total hits. Six misses. That's not too bad, actually. Those Germans are now in formation. So they get the full save. Uh, for artillery crew, it's seven up. Fail. Fail. That was a three. That was two. Fail, fail, fail. That's seven to success. Three failed saves. Is that all on camera? Three failed saves, three figures knocked out. There's only two figures there. They dodged a bullet. Or, or uh, accurately, they dodged a cannonball. The only bad news is nobody fired at these Hessians, which means these Hessian infantry can now fire straight into Glover's force. But I'd rather catch, you know, fire from, you know, four infantry figures than a cannon. Because there's no save against cannon. Four, D, they're all within five inches, so four D, uh, four D fours. Germans do score a hit. American save is a seven up. A seven, they did, oh, they got right on the money. You guys saw me roll that live on camera. <sighs> Americans really have been stupid lucky this time. This game so far. Okay, the American fire phase. Rifles, I'm sorry, uh, muskets, here. 
one third range or maximum range, so one third dice. Oh, um, in case anyone asks, that artillery uh, battery is not technically part of Rawls Regiment, so it doesn't trigger additional uh, additional morale checks. So now we're down there, back by uh, St. Michael's um, St. Michael's Evangelical Church. One hit, two hits, four, four. Those are Grenadiers. Their save is a six. One hit, one miss. Boink. That's another morale check. Minus three, so it's an 11 or less. 10, they barely made it. Rawls Regiment is barely holding together. German turn. We just fired them. That artillery's out of gas. Those riflemen cannot shoot again, plus it's the German turn, W. German turn. At least four of these guys have line of sight down there. Extended range, so cut down to, down to half. Medium range, cut it to half, so four dice becomes two dice. Uh, one, two hits, double fours. Four on the bottom, four on the top. Double hits. American um, saves are seven. Two failures. Two American figures are down. The Americans have now potentially lost the game. We're still probably going to win, but potentially have lost. Six figures shooting back. The right number of dice. Of one, two, three versus those three. They're in formation. Their uh, save is going to be a six up. Or a, yeah, six up for a save. Uh, two failures. Fail, fail. That means two more morale checks. Ten. Come on. Nine. Oh my god. How are these guys still alive? Damn it. The Rawls Regiment, man, they're fighting to the bitter end. I'll give them that. Still in column formation. Plus it's the German turn now. Uh, one guy. What the hell? Just to be fair. Uh, two he misses. Okay. Okay, let me go over to the other side of the table. Again, I'm going to shake the table a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. Americans are legit going to lose this game. So I literally can't lose. If I lose one more figure, I've probably lost. If I lose two more figures, I've definitely lost. I've lost half my budget in one go. But, uh, we'll see. I cannot believe Rawls Regiment is still here. They should have won by now. Alright, the only thing we're going to have to do then is break somebody else. Those riflemen cannot shoot again. These guys are going to... Well, actually, the, the Hessians have to shoot first. It's, it's their turn. Oh, wait, no. That one guy fired. That was his turn. It's a, it is our turn. Okay, cool. Uh, one third fire. Into his flank. And he's disordered. So that's negative four on their armor save. Or their formation save. Problem is I'm down to one third dice. There's a total of ten dice there. So that becomes... 10 figures, that makes it 3 dice. Uh, that's 1 hit. And a 10, he saves. Come on. Good God almighty. Artillery can only shoot once a turn. He's fired. I think that's it. Oh, these Germans are going to go ahead and shoot back. Sorry. Uh, 4 divided by 3 is 1. Oh, that's a hit. Here it comes. I told you. I told you this was going to happen. Six is the save, plus one for the fence, five or less, or uh, five or more. A three. 
There it is, folks. The Americans have now probably lost. And that's uh, this guy here. And these guys don't have arc. None of those guys have range. Okay. That's going to be it for turn four. Let me catch up on Mr. Chat here. Uh, thank you for the history behind the battle. This is what makes historical better than uh, sci-fi and fantasy. Roper Bite, I completely agree. Um, might be a command unit next to the smoke on the south road. I may have misread it as a rifleman. Yeah, riflemen uh, only get to shoot first, or only get to shoot once on the south road. Okay, so you're talking about uh, this road down here. This is technically the east road. Because again, north is, this is north over here. North. East, west, south. Um, but I did fire these seven guys. There were seven, now there's only six. And they were at half range, so I could only fire, or medium range, so I could only fire half. That's why I only fired them as, uh, as uh, four dice instead of seven. Holy crap. Okay, so let's begin turn five. Um, this is one overcrowded table. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, it's a street fight. It took place in the town, so this part is still pretty open. You know, fields, bridges, a little bit of hedges, some fences, or whatever, some hills and trees. The south side of the table is downtown Trenton. Yeah, it becomes it's, it's literally a street fight. So the terrain, yes, you're absolutely correct. It does get, uh, it does get very dense down there. A real semi-urban battlefield are definitely overcrowded. Yeah, absolutely, Rasmus, I agree. I expected smaller buildings for 20 millimeter. Um, I won't pick up any of the Beatles buildings now because I don't want to ruin anything on the table. But they are scaled for 20 millimeter uh, based on the doorways and the windows to make sure that a guy at 20 millimeter can fit through the door. So, yeah, that's actually correct. Um, so, needs more snow. Toss some more flour on the gaming table. Uh, that is flour on the gaming table. That's how we got the snow effect. But the snow on the table, historically, it wasn't 100%. It wasn't, uh, it, uh, Trenton was not a snowy battle. It rained the day before. It snowed overnight. And in the morning, it was sleet. It kind of slushed away. Oh, uh, the little bit of snow that's on the table. So if anything, we have a little bit too much snow on the table now. But um, it was it was a it was a sloppy, muddy, crappy kind of a of a fight. Um, put some dead body figures on the table. Well, we could definitely use some. That's for sure. And we got any cotton balls for the gun smoke? Yeah, I've been putting cotton balls for all the gun smoke. Are you looking at the same stream I am, uh, Warpal Bay? Uh, let's see. It is New Jersey. I'm not drowning in snow. Um, yeah, plus it was it was more of a sleet situation on the morning of the 26th September, uh, October. Jesus Christ, 26th December. You guys got me all uh, got me all flustered. Why is that horse just standing there in front of the firing line? We're talking about these cows because we're having hamburger for dinner tonight. Um, they're just there for decoration. They're not any kind of tactical uh, tactical thing. Um, yes, that's true, tough years. I got a swagger stick. Don't get too close. I'll hit you with it. Uh, oh, cool. So, see, we come to Christmas dinner. The battle breaks out. How American is this? This is true, Jason. I mean, it's not American Christmas without some gunfire and people getting stabbed in the belly with bayonets. <laughs> Usually it's that asshole cousin or uncle that wants to talk politics at the Christmas table. Um, but here it's just some, some crazy Germans. So it's all good. Um, Santa loses, the world panics, Jason. Yeah, fortunately, Santa always wins. Although he did personally get shot down. Uh, what was it, two days ago? Um, when we had that game? Um, but his force still won the battle, so all is well. So, cool. All right, let's go ahead and start turn five. Oh, boy. Americans don't want to get too crazy with the movement. Because the Germans will get first past their fire. But I gotta get, uh, I gotta break at least two of these regiments, and I gotta break them now. 
<sighs> Riflemen are good where they are. These guys have moved forward a little bit. So yeah, Vorpal Bite, we are putting cotton balls on the table for muskets. muskets. How long have we been up? Oh, not bad. Two hours and 15 minutes. A little bit less. Alright, what the hell is going on here? I'm losing track of some of my guys. Slow down. This is going to be kind of a long stream, guys. It's a full scale 20 millimeter miniature table with 100. 70 figures or so on the table. I gotta be cool. This is gonna take a couple minutes. Okay, Steven's Brigade is gonna move forward. They're six inches and change formation. Right from them, get out of the way. So these guys can form up. I did give them the bonus for the fence. It is figure by figure, guys, so I do apologize for the long moving faces. Just bear with me. See this, what I'm doing here? Actually, no, you can't. I got two command groups here, so everybody's in proper, uh, uh, proper command diameter radius. Or kick up proper command diameter. Thank you for the tea, John. I am starting to lose my voice here. Let me get my dice tray if I can find it. Two American figures down. That's not good. That is not good. Alright, German pass through fire. We're looking at basically one figure. These four divided by three was extended range. It's basically one dice. Oh, uh, that's a mess. These guys don't have arc. God damn it, bro. What the hell? I don't know why I'm surprised. I played this game at least six times in different systems now. Battlefield Rebellion, Battle System, HCS 1776. Um, the Americans always win the battle. They almost never win the game. The victory conditions are so steep. It is damn near impossible for the Americans to win the actual game. Because it's a miracle battle. Winning the game means matching the historical result. You have to have a miracle game. So it's actually really challenging to win the game as the American. I actually thought I was going to do it. I still technically could. If I table the Hessians, don't lose any more figures, and then get lucky on one die roll. The odds are still kind of with me. Okay, um, Sterling's Brigade is not going to be able to fully deploy. There's not enough space. So this is why I'm setting up the third rank here. 
third rank means uh, that not all my guys will get to shoot. There's Rawl himself. We're about to blow him away. Where the hell are my other Continental Riflemen? Oh, they're over here. That's right. Oh, cool. American Riflemen will take a shot at Rawl uh, when it comes to that part of the thing. And uh, hopefully shoot Rawl down. That'll hopefully end the battle. As it did historically. Command unit, command unit, one Hessian figure. He's at medium range. Give him a little single puff for himself. Okay. So, basically, one dice reduces to half a dice, which still rounds up to one dice. Alrighty. Three, he misses. Alrighty. So far, so good. No arc, no arc. He's already fired. He's got arc, but he's got blocked by line of sight in friendly units. You're not allowed to shoot through friendly units in this game. Um... Okay, what's going on down here? American movement phase. Again, they're not in base-to-base -base contact because they're skirmishers. It's supposed to be like that. Uh, Sergeant's Brigade Sullivan's Division is going to pivot down this road and switch formation as it does so. It's going to reduce them from 9 inches to 6 inches for a re uh, change of frontage of three figures. I'm going to fire right into the flank of Nipausen. Hopefully break them. The good news is every Hessian unit is shaken. If I can break them and when all three of them are routed simultaneously, that's the game. That's mass surrender. That's what I'm going for here. These guys do get legit uh, fire. There's four figures there. Um, medium range, so that's going to be half dice. Gives me uh, two dice. Four divided by two is uh, two. That's going to be one hit. Oh no. Uh, that is eight. That is a successful save. Whew. Dodged a bullet, literally. These four guys are within. Is that even on camera? Probably. Sorry about the table shake, guys. Um, these four guys that are mostly hidden by the houses are going to fire on um, Glover's Brigade, because I did technically move. Oh, man. Come on. Give me a break, guys. Uh, that is one hit. And that's a fail. It's a third figure. Oh no! That's three American figures down. The Americans could still win. Now they have to roll the five up. That's if I table the Hessians and don't lose a single solitary figure from here on out. If I lose one more figure, I've definitely lost the game. Oh god. Good news is I've now moved all my American forces. I can now open fire on the Hessians as they do their movement. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen is these guys are going to form up into their regular formation. That counts as movement. Boom! They take uh, fire. First of all, these uh, American uh, riflemen. I'm sorry? That was last turn. This is turn five now. Yeah, once per turn. Uh, had a question there, but no worries. So that is these uh, six remaining riflemen. 
medium range, so it gets that reduced down to three dice. However, it's 3d8s. It's coming apart, guys. It's coming apart. Uh, they do fail their save, though. Another Hessian unit down. Nighthausen is not even... Or not, that's not even Nighthausen. That's lost for They're not even close to... 50% uh, um, casualties yet. These guys try to form up. As they do, they catch American artillery fire. So you're able to fire over skirmish units because skirmish units have gaps in the formation. You're not allowed to fire over regular units. So these guns can fire over that particular unit uh, without an issue. Come on, man, give me a break. One hit, two, three, four hits, no saves. Because artillery. That is four hits. In a single firing step, so that, uh, that triggers a morale check. Ten, they're okay. Now they are shaken. Yeah, they're shaken. Um, so that's definitely not. And then they have to take another save. They make another morale save for um, taking artillery fire. Six and seven. That is thirteen. That unit, Nighthouse and Fusiliers, they start off at a. 12, they're reduced to a either 11 or 10 because of being shaken. It doesn't matter. They rolled a 13. They were already shaken. Which means they are now routed. They have to get off the table as fast as they can. Their movement in column formation is 18 inches. They're within 18 inches of the side of the table. I'm taking Lostburg Regiment off the table. They literally run for their lives. I'll leave it. No, I won't leave the acres on there. They're gone. They're out of here. All right, one regiment down. Thank God. Jesus. Okay. Other Hessian... Nighthouse and Fusiliers. They're already in formation. They're going to move up nine inches. I'm still pretty sure the Americans have lost this game. Why? I'm kind of cheating here because I'm allowing or shaking units to move closer to the enemy. I shouldn't be doing cheating in favor of the Hessians. No wonder the Americans are losing. When you're shaking, you're not allowed to move closer to an active enemy. I, 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 I put them back. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, I'll come back to this unit, this unit, this unit. None of them are fired, although honestly I don't think they're in range. Or have line of sight. No, they don't. So there might not be any more reaction fire. Alright, moving over to the other side of the table. Bring my dice with me. Uh oh, we have a report from the Buffalo Battle. Oh my god, there's a lot going on here. Guys, I, have I tried cheating? I try not to cheat on camera because then people catch me. When the camera's not on, I cheat habitually. But I never cheat when the camera's on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so... Let's figure this part out. Um, first of all, one, two, three, four, five. I'm within... Uh, sorry, guys, the headset's falling off. I didn't bring my tape measure with me. Is that even on camera, I hope? Make sure you guys can see what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to try to wrap up Rawls Regiment. That'll break too. 
So these guys are within. Ooh, that's close. That is, they are within eight inches. All right, like right on the line. All right, so that's full firepower. That is eight, uh, sorry, D8s, five D8s. Do I have five D8s? I might have to re-roll some of these. Okay, um, you guys might not be able to see this. Is this dice box on camera, John? Or you can look there, John. Look, look on the camera. Is that better? All right, uh, here are the first three D8s. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six hits. Good so far. Two more. Seven, eight, nine hits. Holy crap. I think we just lost Raw. Okay, uh, what did I say? That was nine hits? Cool, thank you. Welcome about games. Hello from Canada. All right, here's the first five saves. Fail, 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 fail. No, sorry. Air information. Succeed, succeed, succeed. Two fails so far. Four more. Holy crap, three more saves. So they failed a total of one, two, three, four saves. One, two, three, four. Rawl is technically still in it. That is, however, four more um, morale checks. Because that unit's below 50%. 13, fail. 18, catastrophic fail. 17, catastrophic fail again. And 16, they literally failed four times. There goes Wall Regiment. They've had enough. We're going back to Germany. Rawl himself was technically shot historically. This time he's running away. Look at the bright side, Rawl. At least this time he survived. He died, and he wound up being buried in that cemetery over there. Anybody else of Rawls' regiment left? That's it. The only thing left is a little bit of knife housing. Okay. Uh, the Americans will now take their combat phase. We'll start off with these, although it's kind of far away. I do have flanking fire right down the street. Jen, is that on camera? You're looking at no on this camera this is real time that's on camera okay so sullivan's uh the back end of sullivan's division that's going to be mostly sergeant's brigade is going to go ahead and shoot and they're going to get a bonus for flank fire because clearly they're shooting down the flank of what's left here of nipehouse and uh, fusiliers so here we go well, the problem is they're kind of far away they are far away. They are extreme range. All right, that sucks. So 10 figures becomes three dice. So it's going to be three D4s. It will be a negative two on the uh, armor save, though, if I score any hits. And I score one hit. So the save goes from a seven to a nine. And they fail. Thanks to the... Uh, thanks to the um, Flanking fire. It did cost him a figure. Right. Holy crap. He suddenly has no targets. They suddenly have no targets. They got done killing and uh, capturing Wall and the rest of his command groups. These guys have no line of sight, no line of sight. The cannons fired. Yeah, this pretty much going to be it. The only two German units left. Is that on camera? Here and here. There's only two real German companies left. Um, which is historically the way it happened. Neiphausen, because of where they were positioned, Americans came in mostly from the north and from the west. So Lossburg was right, oh, sorry, Lossburg was destroyed off the of that, so was Wall's regiment. And Neiphausen kind of escaped out this way, where you can't see because the table ends. But over here, there's another meadow and an apple orchard. That's where the final surrender took place. So except for the exceptional American casualties, we're doing pretty good. And we still might get away with that, although the odds are now technically against us. They're shaking. 
so they can't move towards us. No one's got line of sight. That ends turn five. Holy crap, I'm totally losing my voice. Let me take some tea here, guys. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. And let me catch up on some comments. We're just about done here, guys. Ugh. So Ben Johnson says today was a good day. Buffalo 33, New England 21 final. All right, congratulations to the Buffalo Bills. Verbal Bite, we should play more miniatures games. Um, sure, Verbal Bite, why don't you uh, for, film some miniature games and put them on your YouTube channel? Or send us the video, and we'll feature them on our channel. It'll be fun. Um, Kobayashi Maru, new program. Oh no, we've got a bot. Go die, bot. I'll deal with you later. In fact, I'll deal with you right now. Oh, I can't. Who writes? I'll deal with you later. Roper Bite says, We want your hamburger. Give up the strudel. Hello, Walkabout Games. Yes, thanks very much for coming by. Definitely appreciate it. Roper Bite says, Give us your German beer and maybe we'll spare your lives. No worries. Uh, up the British, down the Rebels. Oh, wait, never mind. It's the Germans. This is Walkabout Games. Yeah, Walkabout Games. This is uh, this is one of the few American Revolution battles I can do in the uh, the old OTT community and not get under people's skin because uh, they're, they're, it's not the British that we're shooting up here. It's, uh, it's the Germans. And, as I'm sure Walkabout Games can probably attest, uh, my favorite campaign up north, the whole... Um, Lake Champlain, Quebec, Montreal, St. John's, down to Ticonderoga, Oriskany, Fort Stanwix, uh, first and second Saratoga. There's a lot of Canadians in that, uh, in that part of the war, too. And the Canadians are not exactly on our Christmas card lists. Um, Canadian Rangers were actually pretty, pretty scary light infantry uh, fighting for the crown in those battles. Fortunately, there are no, there are none of them. Either. It's just uh, Germans. And Americans. Historically, there was a detachment of 16th Queen's Light Dragoons. There were some British troops here. I think they were couriers. Like the in the whole force, there was like 12 guys or 18 guys, something like that. I don't know if they actually took part in the fighting. Knox did his best. Knox kind of broke. Um, Mossberg Regiment. This is artillery that pretty much blew up Mossberg. So, yeah, Knox definitely did, did well uh, in this game. So everyone's wishing each other happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Um, talk about freezing upstate New York uh, with the in-wars. Oh, no, sorry, Rasmus. He calls it the in-wars, not the in-laws. <laughs> We're doing 73 and sunny today. Yeah, it's actually getting kind of warm in here. Uh, one degree Celsius. Oh, my God, Rasmus, I don't know. Then again, you're a Viking. You're, you're used to it. It's all good. Uh, Vorpa White says, I have to learn how to use the camera. No worries. But what, uh, Vorpa White, in all seriousness, we are taking um, the community feedback to heart. Clearly, we're doing a miniatures game here. Uh, it's just a metric. It's really hard compared to other kinds of games. Not to set up on the table. But whenever we can, we definitely do it. Also, please, everyone, remember, 22 January, we are going to have Chicago's miniature game, 28 millimeter war drift. So... We hear everyone, what everyone's saying, and we are actually trying to do it. Um, it is an, an additional order of magnitude difficult, however, but we are working on it. Damon says, T, aren't you supposed to throw that in the harbor to keep it in the spirit of the event? 1773 was a long time ago. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the famous tea party was technically not even part of the revolution. That was 1773. The first shots of the revolution were April of 75. We weren't officially declared independence until July of 76. This is now December of 76. But I drink a lot of tea when I'm gaming because uh, otherwise I lose my voice. And it has to be hot. And if I drink coffee, I just freak out. If I drink this much coffee, especially late in the afternoon, um, it, starts to get, uh, it starts to get crazy. But no worries, Damon. I think the Americans have lost this game. Um... But we've certainly won the battle. But that's kind of how it always happens. Okay, beginning turn six. Let's get this going. The Germans could not move forward because they are shaken. And I've been kind of screwing up the way they've been doing their, their movement. 
over the last few turns. So now the Americans are going to start their movement on turn six. I'm almost positive this is going to be the last game, um, the, the last turn of the game. So let's go ahead and kick this pig and, oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and kick this pig and hopefully get it finished up. Can that artillery see anything? Yes, but I have to move some units. Am I in range? Yes, barely. At least two of the guns are. This one's out of range. I'm sorry, what now? They, they broke one regiment, come on now. They broke Lossberg. They're just too long ranged. They did kind of destroy one third of the German force. Um, I would like that they were a little closer. Yeah, yeah, we uh, looked at that comment earlier. Okay, so American movement phase. How do I get closer to uh, what's left of Nipausen without taking any more casualties? All right, you know what? I'm just going to trust the dice because if I try to get screwy with it, it's we're gonna be here all day. I'm gonna try and can you guys see this? Nope. I'm gonna move uh, this part of Femoy's brigade up to here so I can get a catty corner shot through this alleyway on that uh, night house. That is extreme range. So, is that as far as I can move? Yeah. So I don't think, uh, I don't think that's going to be worth anything. Is that 15 inches or less? It's 15 inches exactly. Okay. So who knows? It might pay off. Every little bit helps at this point. Started off with 20. I gotta kill 10 to hopefully get them to, to break. Fifteen inches is the extreme range on these guys. I'm going to get just past 15 inches so they can't shoot back at me. But my rifleman can shoot at them. It's time to get gamey. I'm also keeping this lane open for that artillery. Cost one inch to cross this fence, so my speed is reduced to eight inches. Oh no, Mr. Fence! One thing that's mildly disappointing: we didn't have any. Uh, uh, we did not have any um, melee combat. All right, that will trigger some pass through fire because I am in range and uh, here it comes. If I survive this, I'll be okay. It is 10 inches, so it's gonna be half dice and only five figures have line of sight over past this house right here. Hopefully that's all on camera, okay, good. So it's one, two, three, four, five, becomes three dice. Where's my dice box? Corporal Bite wants me to cheat. I'm disappointed in you, Corporal Bite. Disappointed. Is our stream still stable, Jen? We haven't had any lag or anything like that. Is our stream still stable? Okay, I'm just asking. Right. Well, I was just talking to you now. Okay, that is one hit with a four. There it is. The Americans have lost. God damn it. Ugh. Oh man. That had to happen, didn't it? Oh well. Alright, so that's this little bit of pass through fire. 
I'm gonna finish the battle, cause especially since the battle ends here. Um, that's pretty much the end of. Uh, yeah, that's now four American figures down. Wait, I, I it still would have, uh, it still would have been a failure. I rolled a two, cause I get a plus one because of the power. But I, I, I completely missed the stage. So no worries now. I probably should have done that. It's fine. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and move everything. Um, cause they've taken their pass through fire. Now it's time to just get crazy and kill some drones. Ooh, wait, I can't block that line of sight. Four figures means 80 combat ineffectives. Out of 80 combat ineffectives, you're talking about at least 10 killed, maybe 20 wounded, which is in legit excess of uh, Washington. Historical casualties. <laughs> 80 combat ineffectives. Lost four figures. Each figure is 20. Now, out of 80 men. 80 combat ineffectives means, you know, probably 10 guys killed, maybe 20 guys wounded, um, some guys lost, yeah, something happened, they ran out of ammo, uh, they got sick, they stubbed their toe. Like I said, I played it six different times in at least four different systems. Battle system, HCS 1776, Battlefield Rebellion, and I think I either played it or saw it played. Sorry, I either played it or saw it played in um, Rebels and Redcoats at a convention way back in the 90s. And I, I've, I've, never seen it, I've never seen the Americans win the game. It's a miracle. It's the miracle at Trenton. That means in order to, again, uh, duplicate Washington's victory, you have to have a miracle game. So it's really challenging. Again, it's good for solitaire. Usually in solitaire, you lose. I'm not talking about free solitaire. I'm talking about like the original solitaire. You usually lose. But uh, when you're not playing against an opponent, you know, you want to be challenging. I'll just leave that stuff alone for now. One brigade firing, two brigades firing, three brigades firing, riflemen firing, this brigade firing, although at extreme long range, and artillery support. So let's put in the coup de gras and hopefully finish off these sessions. We got a grand total of four dice over there at third. That's gonna knock me down to one dice. A three is no hits. You're right, Dad, those that are, those guns suck. They didn't do anything for me. Here's something I did do to support me, this, uh, these riflemen. Six. They're long range, I believe. They're greater than 16 inches, I'm almost sure. Oh, no, they're not. Cool, so I get half dice. That's three D8s. Come on. Miss, miss, one hit. It did fail, though. All right. Nine, ten, down to three because of extreme range. Two hits, I'll take it. Nine and seven, one success, one fail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nine, ten. I'm within medium range now, so it's half dice and negative two off the save. So 5D for worse. That's a four, I'm gonna take it. And another four, that's two more hits. Uh, plus two on the, uh, two plus two penalty on the save because of flanking fire, that's two fails.
Not all of them can shoot because they're shooting through that corner, through that alleyway across the fence. It looks like one, two, three, four, four. Medium range into the flank, into the rear. I'll take it. That's only that's it's only gonna be two dice. And double fours. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. Four, four. Um, six becomes a ten, so that's basically no save. Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's still 12 of them left. Oh, these guys. That pretty much lost the game for me. They get to shoot back at least. Come on, let me kill two more guys to trigger another morale save. Hit, 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 three hits. Okay, now I just gotta get a little bit lucky on the cover saves. Fail, fail, sorry, fail, fail, succeed. Two figures down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're now at 50%. That triggers another morale check. They're already shaken. That's negative two. They're already at negative 50%. That's another negative two. They started off at 12. They're down to an eight. Two D10s. 12, uh, 14. Their morale was a 8. They just rolled a 14. They're already shaken. They're now routed. That's game. Route, run away. Route, run away. They run away because Americans are shooting them from three different sides, including rifles and artillery. Rifles, guys, aren't scary just because of their enhanced range and accuracy. They're also terrifying in combat terms, military combat terms, in the American Revolution because the first guys to get hit are your platoon leaders, are your officers, are your sergeants, are your corporals. They specifically aim at your junior officers and your NCOs first. So the... Uh, the cohesion that actually holds your force together is the first thing down. So there's no one holding your unit together. So between catching musket fire from three sides, plus light artillery, plus rifle fire, let me go ahead and take this off of the mount. Sorry for the shake there. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. The last Hessian regiment has been broken. The Americans have won the battle as took place historically. The only problem is I did lose four figures. The Hessians have lost 84 figures. Um, but nevertheless, when the score is four to 84, that's technically an American loss. It is asymmetric victory conditions in the extreme. So Washington, where are, where are you at? You technically lost too many people, or I should say I lost too many people. I did not, I did not live up to, uh, to Washington standards. But you know what? Washington standards at Trenton are pretty awesome. So I don't feel too bad about that. I will say this. That is the closest I've ever come uh, to actually winning the game at Trenton. So here we have Glover, where he did manage to save the day against that, uh, come on, against that artillery. And yeah, that's the battle. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, forgive the camera jostling for just another second here, guys. This cart really is kind of a pain in the ass. It doesn't uh, maneuver terribly easily. All right, give me a second, guys. Again, I apologize for the camera jostling. This will be the last one. So hopefully you guys get a look at, like, right down the table there. Oops. Let me pick that up a little bit. Cool. All right, so there we are. There's the Battle of Trenton, south to north. That's actually the proper orientation of the table. Um, and, yeah, there we are. So thanks very much, everybody, for coming out. I'm going to check out the comments again and see how we go. Again, we do have an American victory in the battle, although I did lose four figures 
I lose one figure for free. If I lost two figures, I win the game on a three up. If I lose three figures, I win the game on a five up. And on four figures, I've lost the game. And the reason there's that little bit of dice mechanic in there is historically, he lost 12 people. Probably four killed and eight wounded. Plus a couple uh, on the way there through the frostbite and exposure, a couple on the way back during the river crossing back into Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, who knows what else. So he did probably lose combat effective, probably about 20 guys. Now, in that 20 guys, or that, when, when you lose a figure, that's not 20 men killed. That's, again, if that's 20 guys and you lose one figure, that's 20 combat ineffectives. That's probably hopelessly disorganized, maybe two to four killed, six to eight wounded, you know. In other words, there's a little bit of wiggle room in that math as far as how many figures equal those historical losses. Also, I gave the Hessians too many guys. The Hessians had 84 figures. They had 20 men apiece. The Hessian regiment was, uh, the Hessian brigade was 900 men, or really 1,000 men. You should be looking at about 50 figures. I had 84 figures on the map. So, it's fine. So, I gave the Americans some extra casualties. Uh, nevertheless, I did whiff it. I wound up with four casualties um, instead of the allowed three. Ideally, one, maybe two. I wound up taking four. So we're looking at, uh, you know, obviously an American battlefield victory, although there's no way the Americans can really lose this game on the table. But you can totally lose it by points, which is, you know, what makes it challenging. So I'll check out the comments one more time before we close out the stream. Uh, stream has been good. Okay, thanks, Ben. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, ben says, tell Piotr I'm going to make my pizza now. Okay, no worries. Corporal Bite says, I survived Christmas 2021. I'm alive. Rasmus says, flank them. Yeah, you're talking about that last bit of uh, Nighthausen Regiment there by the Presbyterian Church. I outflanked them twice. I think I had... Um, I had... Uh, sorry about the noise back there, folks. I had St. Clair's Regiment behind... Or, I'm sorry, St. Clair's uh, Brigade behind them. I had... Um, Sergeant's Brigade, Sullivan's Division on their flank. I had artillery coming in from their front. I had two uh, brigades. Oh, actually, really, these two, not this one. These two brigades, or regiments, I should say, firing on their front, riflemen from the flank, and again, I already talked about the artillery. So, yeah, Nipausen got, got, got clobbered. But uh, that's kind of how it happened. They got pushed off to the northwest, sorry, the northeast, they got kind of surrounded, and that's kind of how they surrendered. Technically, it happened about here. But again, the table doesn't come out that far. There's an apple orchard here, and there's another meadow down here. This meadow is where the actual final surrender finally did take place. Um, but no worries. Uh, Rasmus says, I'm going to need long sleeves to go outside. Well, then don't go outside, man. Stay inside where it's you know, warm and toasty. Uh, Vorpal Bites says, learning how to use the camera and computer is something I've always wanted to do never quite got around to doing it. It is a challenge. Actually, you know, it's it's one thing to game, to even put on a good game for a convention or for an event or even in your own house. It's another thing to put it on the web. It is, it is a challenge. Um, so I definitely get it. Um, Jennifer Lemon says, oh no, four American figures. The Patriots technically lose the game. They still win the battle, but they lose the game. Yes, yeah, asymmetrical. That's how it happens. It's always a risk playing any game, says Warpro Bite, against the Germans. You can never tell when they're going to disable me with a strategically placed hamburger between my hands and the keyboard. That is true. It's tough to win when you're eating food. Aim. Sir, you lose that term loosely. It's true. We're firing smoothbore muskets. Uh, target the brass. I really should have done that. Um, Rasmus says, target the brass. American riflemen do have that special rule. They can target officers. And Battle System does have a mechanic where an additional morale trigger is required when your uh, commander or hero is uh, knocked down. So I probably should have done that. Uh, hundreds of hours creating the train for a 90-minute game. Was it worth it? Well, hell yes, it was. Actually, yeah, it kind of was. Um, <laughs> uh, the good news is I get to use this terrain a lot more. 
um, I now have, I'll never have to build another 20 millimeter, uh, because all my American Revolution stuff is 20 millimeter. I will never have to build another building again. I have plenty. I mean, are you ever going to really, except for maybe Yorktown, are you ever going to need more buildings than this uh, for an American Revolution game? Probably not. I can probably run a lot of Napoleon, not that I ever get into Napoleonic, but American Civil War, I could probably get away with some of this stuff with American Civil War. Uh, no worries at all. So, yeah, I got plenty of buildings. Great work. I don't think this game could be winnable with the Continental Army if you consider the law of averages and the control of the dice. Um, I've come close. I've come close. In Battlefield Rebellion, I've lost two figures, two counters. Um, so that's like one away from, from winning the game. Here, I lost four when I could have won while losing three. The only problem is uh, I got a little impatient at the end because the stream is now uh, passing three hours. I didn't want this to take all day. Um, also, the American luck was really doing well uh, at first. And then it just kind of dried up on me there at the end. Um, but again, for a, for a scenario where you're almost always playing solitaire, you should have it challenging enough where you have to play it seven or eight times before you win it once. Uh, that's kind of how solitaire games tend to go. But thanks very much, Damon. I appreciate you coming out. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, I, I appreciate Damon and uh, let's see who else is here is with us. Uh, people that are uh, east of us, more or less. I definitely appreciate Dylan coming out earlier. It's I don't even know what time it is over there. Queensland, Australia. As Ben said, it looked awesome too. Thanks very much, Rasmus. I definitely appreciate it. Um, would it have not been better moving up in the front? Yeah, I was trying to keep that center part of the field clear for my artillery. Um, outside of that one lucky salvo dropped on the Lost Work Regiment as they came out of their barracks, the artillery was kind of a wet fart. They didn't, they didn't do that great. Um, it is a range question, though. I mean, from here all the way to the effective battle area down here, it's, it's, it's a stretch. That to that is 30 inches. That to in here is like 45 inches. Uh, and that's a better extreme range. Um, but it does negate any kind of terrain bonus from buildings, and it does uh, negate uh, saves. Because saves are based off of, because uh, terrain bonuses are based off of saves. So, you know, it's, it kind of goes without saying. Uh, that's just the way battle system works. But that was my logic in not setting up a huge center phalanx force and just spearheading into the town. Um, also, you then invite problems on your flanks uh, when you do that, although that wasn't really going to be an issue here. Rawl was pretty much shit canned right off the bat. That part of the game went well. That part of the game was solid. Um, Mossberg was pretty solid. Nighthouse just cost me one, one, one casualty figure too many. But um, came close. It's all good. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming out. Super appreciate it, as always. Thanks again. Hope you guys have a great holiday. All right, guys. This is a Risky Gym, as always. Tango Mike for watching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off. All right, guys. We're taking off, as always. Super appreciate it. Tango Mike for listening.